very excited. Oh, and <laughs> we're live. Oh my god. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Oh my goodness. Hi, how is everybody doing? I'm sweating. <laughs> I mean, like two minutes before this, I'm like, wow. Why? I'm just uh, in my house. But even though when I did with M, I was like, I am drenched. Like <laughs> I, it's like you're after running a marathon, but you've just like literally just stood. <laughs> I'm literally, literally. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Honestly, the same way. I was like, is this a good idea? Like, you know, the, the five minutes before the live are the craziest. It really like hits you that it's about to happen. You're like, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's like, why am I even here? I don't know. I don't even like this book. <laughs> Wait, I actually don't like the book. <laughs> it's like, it pops into my head. Like, it's my, my brain like boggles me anyways i did like the book i really like the book five stars <laughs> <laughs> you're scared you're like the fans are here they're all gonna be like <sighs> imagine though I, I, I was like a secret hater you two like loved it and me a secret hater <gasps> hello oh hi, hi. so how's it going <laughs> oh my god this is <laughs> insane i can't believe like everything <laughs> I'm in the club, like just saying it is it's 10 a.m. I don't know why I had to look at the clock like I've obviously been sitting here waiting for it to be <laughs> and there's like sunlight streaming in and everyone else is going to sleep it's so weird <laughs> yeah the sun is setting here now it looks really nice it's crazy to see like the time zones like the differences that's so weird like it's Sunday for you Eden that's weird it is it I is know Sunday. Can I be with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, it's okay. I kind of like my job. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Oh, oh. Good idea. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's, That's kind of cool. We're kind of relatively close. Oh. Yeah. It's 6 here, 6 3 p.m. It's, I don't know. It's like, crazy that we're all in like different time zones right now it is really crazy i mean most people think australia doesn't exist so <gasps> maybe, maybe i'm not even here. It, is, it is really far away like if you're looking at a globe it's so far away you have to like move the globe so much to get to australia it's very weird How did I end up oh my god <laughs> i always like i knew about australia but i didn't realize that the time difference was so much i was like looking it up for this live yeah. and it was like they're like 16 hours <laughs> ahead of us i was like that's like a whole nother dimension that's a whole nother <laughs> world also i want to ask you did you do you watch home 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 and away home and away, home and away. neighbors <laughs> Okay, so I watched it when I was younger and then I kind of like grew out of it. But like my grandfather, who is like, okay, I come from a migrant family, so it's very weird, but he's so obsessed with it, but he doesn't understand like mostly what's happening. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> That's my mom with Fuller House, like Full House. That's oh, like yeah, yeah. our thing. Oh. My mom is like, she does not get what's going on, but she'll be like, oh my god, the girls are so beautiful. Like, That's literally yeah. all she knows. <laughs> Thing. they'll be like it's on, don't talk and i'm like you don't even know what's happening <laughs> child <laughs> oh my god it's crazy like with like having the different experiences of the different oh, places yeah. that you're at it's so Very cool awesome. i feel like yeah. that's why i love like this like community is because i've met so many people and half of the people that i know are nowhere <laughs> near me yes same mostly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so surprised to meet M. She's she obviously lives in Ireland. I'm like, wow. This is I know. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> the only friend that I have that's near me is like two states away still, so it's still like a problem to get to. But it's it was yeah. like I was like, yes, one person here. <laughs> I feel like we have such a. I'm not gonna say a small bookish community in Australia, but it's like a bit more tight knit because it's such a small place to be, and so mm -hmm. a lot publisher events and stuff we have here like you end up meeting people so I have like a few in real life friends that I see like three times a year <laughs> but yeah everyone else that's good though that's good <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's oh my god okay should we like talk about the book <laughs> yes also <laughs> okay I an echo of sorts because I have my I don't have headphones in but I can totally put headphones in um it doesn't sound really bad right now I literally, I think it just sounds totally grand for me. Can you yeah. hear my dog barking? 
I can't. Yeah, it's okay though. <laughs> I freaking love dogs you don't understand like I have a problem every time I I'm so sorry I'm like again we should get back to no the it's okay no no you're good you're good dog and like a dog butt I'm like hello look at his butt like every single time every, my thinks <laughs> oh, I was watching a video yesterday Yesterday of like ranking dogs like the best breeds and I had no dog like I've never had a dog in my life but I was here sitting like judging all of them like I knew what I was talking about what was the top dog what was number one um I forgot like they all had like their own separate list so is their top five but I oh, think oh, the one that really stuck out to me were like a corgi I never thought they were cute until I was looking oh. at them and I was like oh, you're adorable like you're they're interesting are- breeds dogs <laughs> but for me i think i'm gonna end up with like i want a bulldog like a bulldog just seems like so perfect i think they're so they look mean but they're so sweet mm. so i feel like that's perfect for me okay please get a dog i will look seriously through you both because i can't have one in my apartment it really sucks and like my mom and dad both have like my dad has a german shepherd and my mom has like he's a a jack russell chihuahua he is so oh very angry mean boy but we love him <laughs> but yeah i'm just happy okay well this time around i wanted to like have a couple questions ready just so like we could have something so i'm gonna like <laughs> i made like a whole like document so i'm very prepared um <laughs> I feel like I'm taking an essay. No, I promise it's not an essay. essay. Exam. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. I was going to say, what was your favorite part of the book? And if you've reread it again, right? Like, what did it change this time or was it the same? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say that. Because I feel like as soon as I read the book and I close it, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah, that I get time. that. But like, okay, if I had to think of one that's like really ingrained in my memory, it's definitely mm-hmm. um, the the whole club dance scene with Cordelia. <laughs> that yeah. was, that's good I was one. like, yeah, girl, like she has so much confidence. I really love how like self aware she is as well as the character because I'm so used to them going through like this character arc where they start off and they're like, I don't know myself and like my, my power and they don't really feel it. But she's just like, I know, like, I don't care. And I'm going to get up mm. there. I just love it. So that would be. <laughs> That's a good I scene. I agree. That was a really good scene. I remember that, like that moment. And I was just like, does she just do that? I was like, does she just get up there and just do it? <laughs> like you said, like most Cassie Clear characters are just like fantasy characters. The first book, is always like i don't deserve this power like i'm not yeah, good like, enough but she was like no i'm gonna get up there and like just yeah, do it workish it was that. it was crazy i love that i think that's why i love cordelia i think she's my favorite because she's just yes. so like she has her moments of being a teenager like obviously having her insecurities yeah. and like feeling like she's not good but when it comes down to it like the moments that really matter she really does step up every time and yeah. especially like the time period that she's in it's like you would not expect a girl to do that what she's doing and i hate saying she's not like other girls but she's really not <laughs> <laughs> like what the girls during that time and she's like pushing the limits while also trying to keep like her honor or whatever like her family thing so i think it was really unique in that sense yes i agree <laughs> I don't so know sarah what's your favorite <laughs> um probably when she was like telling stories to james you know when he was was he dying or was he like i don't know hallucinating oh, and he, he was, was like, sick right stories. yeah i don't know when i i've I can't really remember. I yeah. I watched um what's her name Poland books like book yes. talks on them again, <laughs> so it refreshed my memory. Um, but yeah, that was a good moment. I thought it was really yeah. cute. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. The whole Layla nickname is just my heart. Yeah. Like, I know. Oh, we like Daisy. I don't really like Daisy. Look no, my Daisy. I mean, <laughs> no, but when he calls her Layla, I'm like, yes, this is the moment. This yeah. is happening. It's gonna, it's gonna happen now. <laughs> yeah, they're cute. I feel like for me, um, 
my favorite moment oh, what is it like i don't even know because i just reread it but it's like mm, i think anything with just seeing like their dynamic like of the group because yeah. usually uh with the big cast like this even i remember like reading the mortal instruments like it took a while to get used to everybody. Like, for example, like my sister's reading the Mortal Instruments now, and she hates half of the people that she's gonna love in the next book. So, like, yeah. the fact that we could understand the group dynamic and then mm-hmm. add the two new people in, like even Alistair, mm-hmm. like he's yeah. an honorary yeah. member. Yeah, it's, yeah. Everybody me. is multi-layered, and there's. There's never a moment for me to be like, they're not friends. Like, they're friends because of convenience or they're family friends. It's like, no, th- those circumstances, like, help them be friends. But they, like, made their own friendship. Because, you know, I've I've had, like, I feel like everybody in their life has had, like, family friends who their family has known. Or, yeah. like, people that you know yeah. because of, like, school. So you're forced to be friends. But it's, like, I think friendships that are the most beautiful are, like, what you take with that circumstance like you take it and make it your own thing people don't you know when your mom's not there you're still hanging out is what i'm saying like you know it's, yeah, it's yeah. really beautiful and for me every moment that it was like will tessa and Jem, i wanted to cry oh, like every yeah. second Same. I, was, I, 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 I was gonna say have you guys read i always hop on about this but have you read ghost from the shadow market yeah, yes. okay, wow. that is like my favorite <laughs> book ever, and I don't know why, but I didn't like I didn't make the connection when I was going to Chain of Gold at first. I was like, okay, I need to read like Tales from the Shit, <laughs> Tales from the Tales from the Shadow, Shadow Hunter, Hunter Academy, Academy. That one and Ghost from the Shadow Market. But I was like, okay, definitely like the Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy one's going to be the most important. But oh my god, like Ghost from the Shadow yeah. Market is like it's its, it's own different. Thing. Oh, I was crying the whole way through. It was just I no. I feel like you're so right. Like people, people think that um, like a lot of people who haven't read the books yet, they think that they can just like read like the Infernal Devices and then just read Chain of Gold. But it's just you're yeah. not gonna get it. Like you have to. I know it's a lot of books, but like once you start reading it, you want all those books. Like there's a reason why this woman is still has a job. Like. If people still want this, like, these books, it's because every single thing that happens, even from, like, 10 years ago that she wrote, it all comes back. And the most important thing is, like, that. For me, I love authors who do that, who plant seeds, and then they grow it. And, like, in the next series, you're like, this is why she did it, and this makes sense. It's, like, a whole connection thing. And it's yeah, more eggs. than, like, foreshadowing. It's, like, bigger than that. It's, it's like, a whole world. And Ghost of the Shadow Market was so good. And there was some, for example, like, I was doing my theories video, so I kept bringing it up because yeah, there was yeah. like a scene with, like, Matthew at the, at the Shadow Market, and I was like, this is why, if you read it, you would know why he's depressed in all of Chain of Gold. Like, you would yeah. know why he's so emo. <laughs> I feel so that is my favorite him. character, I swear to God. And, okay, I know a lot of people are going to come at me for this, but, like, I ship Matthew and Cordelia so hard. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I, it's okay. I don't, I don't like, oh, God, this is hard. But I don't want to see a repeat of Cordelia's, like, history, like, family history. But at the same time, mm. I just, I love him. Mm. And I feel like he's so misunderstood. <laughs> like, I don't know. Mm. I don't want things to be with, like, you know, the person. But it's, it's just very difficult. And I hate that there's, like, this love triangle that's, like, not mimicking, but it's so similar now to, like, what happened yeah. with Tessa. And I'm like, well, is this yeah. <laughs> Am I going to I, die? <laughs> I can't. If they do that, like, I'm going to be so mad. I, I don't want another, like, Will and Tessa situation because I feel like the book is already – so powered by their relationship that yeah. like if we do another one it's gonna just be overdone but I don't mm. ship like I here's my <laughs> reasoning it's like I think that like Matthew doesn't like like her he, or I think the same thing that happened with Lucy where he thought that he potentially had feelings for her it's more of the thing weird. of like this girl can like see me for who I am so like let mm. me have feelings and i really love i love 
Matthew so much. And I feel like the second time around when I was reading it, I was so much more critical of him. I don't know why though. Like I was like, Matthew, you're such an idiot. Like, what are you doing? Like what, like all of this, right? But yeah. then I reread like the, the the chapter from Ghost to the Shadow Market. And like, and then even me, I think the reason why I'm so hard on him is because I see pieces of me in him. So I was like, you're being an idiot. You're doing all this, like you're ruining your life. And then you have to sit down and take it like a deep breath and realize like, what would you do if you you would have done that to your mother and like mm, like yeah. killed another person essentially like how would I deal with it and so like looking at another perspectively I feel like he not until he like deals with the trauma of what happened I don't think he can fully like like somebody I think he just likes her because he admires her her yeah. personality yeah yeah, yeah. And I like, I for one, I would love to see, I think I have the same thing with like Sarah J Mass books where I want like at least one character not to be paired up with someone. So if it was anyone, like I would love for Matthew to just like fully come into his own and, and just go on that journey with himself. Because I find mm -hmm. like in a lot of these like, you know, very, um, the the YA fantasies that we all read, like everyone has to be paired up with someone and no one can mm -hmm. be alone. Um, and if they're alone, then they're just, like, the flirtatious type. Like, it can't just be, like, this, like, self-reckoning of sorts. So if it was yeah. anyone, I would want that for him. I don't know why. I just, there's this, I think my issue is I started Chain of Iron, and so it's clouding my my judgment. <laughs> so I need to just, I just got to stop. <laughs> It'll be really interesting now to see if Cassie, like, introduced a new love interest for Matthew. Because I feel like yeah. he he needs therapy. He just yeah. really needs her because he's coping with all yeah. these emotional problems with alcohol. Like he definitely has alcohol problems. Yeah. And he's projecting his love on random characters like Lucy, Cordelia. Next person's gonna be Grace. Yeah. It's just all yeah. over the place. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. When oh, we get into Grace, like <laughs> Grace. Grace. Oh, oh, Grace. Not I want yet, her dead. She needs I her. want her in a ditch. Like I want her no. in, in the thimes. Like I want her to be thrown into the water, and I never the want to see her again. Oh my god! I so much anger. <laughs> and I was like looking at theories, and everybody's like, she's gonna get a redemption arc. I swear to God, if she gets no. a redemption arc, I'm throwing her out the window. Still, I don't care. <laughs> no, sweet, and we do not stand by it. No, but going back to, like, Matthew, I, like you said, there's just so much trauma that I feel like if there's a love interest, in, like, love interest introduced, I just cannot take it, easy, like, I cannot take it seriously, right? Because I just feel like, like you're saying, Sarah, there's so many problems, and when you're, so, he's so far gone that I cannot, like, imagine him with anybody without being, like, he's with this person because they like are nice or they he seems some part of like them and him and mm. yeah i just cannot i and the the saddest part for me is that the people around him know what's go like going on like there's something happening but they're not doing anything because uh, i think it tells like a beautiful story of like addiction like not only does it impact the person who's like it's happening to but yeah. it also impacts the people because in order for the people to realize that there's something happening they have to be like the person that i love and who i know like i have so many expectations for is not good they're not happy there's something happening like with for example like will there were so many moments in chain of gold where he was on the brink of like figuring it out like being like what's wrong with him and mm -hmm. even like Matthew, I feel like Matthew knows, everybody knows that there's something wrong and they're all just mm -hmm. not saying anything. And I feel like that's so heartbreaking. It's so oh, heartbreaking. Yeah. And I they feel like- don't know how to bring it up. If what you know. is that? They probably don't know how to bring it up maybe because obviously yeah. they might be- Yeah, it's gonna change everything. The whole alcohol situation so they don't know what addiction is like and they're probably like oh he might like grow out of it like no that's yeah. so terrible to say like to say grow out of an, addi an addiction but i don't know they're kids too even though actually how old are they like 17 right yeah yeah that's kids 17. yeah youngsters yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um i was gonna the womb. i feel like cordelia is probably the best I'm not gonna say the best person to help him but it could even be Alistair because of what they've been through with their father they have like more of an understanding and I think he mm -hmm. finds that comfort in her and it's just going to be interesting in Chain of Iron to see 
like not a dynamic shift, but because of, you know, the situation with this whole marriage and the bracelet and, and everything like that, like um, how the relationships will develop because of it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know for like, I, I see that like in the sense of like, I would love to see them help. But honestly, yeah. like if I was Cordelia, would I want to like help because it's traumatic for her as well because she's already seen her father go through it. And even Alistair, like, would you want to, because you know, for even Cordelia, when she was like dealing with her father, she wasn't dealing with it because it was, un, it was hidden from her. Like there were, she knew what was, she like, something was wrong. Like her dad was sick, but the mm -hmm. real people that were dealing with it were like, where her was Sonia, like her mom and Alistair, they knew what was happening. So, I, in my opinion, I think like the best person to help him is Will because he oh, yeah. had his whole mm. moment of like destruction. And I feel like what I really want to see in Chain of Iron is like a moment where like Will is like, no, this is, I know you look up to me because there's so many moments in the book where he's like, you look like I look up to him. He's like my him and Magnus. I feel like if him and Magnus sit him down and are They're like, friends. "Hey, I know, I know," they should him, be best friends. And, I know, right? That's why in the end of Chain of Iron, when Magnus was like not talking to Matthew, was like, "You've talked to everybody here, but you didn't <laughs> talk to Matthew. Take a the second and talk friend. to Matthew." What? When uh, Matthew started like fangirling, kind of when like I know. Um, when oh God, what's his name? I've totally forgot his name. Okay. Um. <laughs> when Magnus, when Magnus, sorry, I just totally forgot. Yes. When Magnus okay. came in, when he started fangirling, I started fangirling. It was a best moment. Yeah, I know, I know. I I, it's like every single time that like Magnus gets back into the books, my heart is just like, you're finally yeah. here. The book can like end now, and I'll be happy yeah. because you came to the you came to the thing. Now it's complete. You know, I want them to go on an, an adventure together, a mm -hmm. non-alcoholic adventure. Because we know, because Magnus, obviously, he drinks too, but obviously, I don't think he has an addiction. But non-alcoholic yeah. al alcoholic adventure into, like, maybe on a spaceship. What? <laughs> Not on a spaceship. <laughs> maybe on a boat. Be become pirates. Oh, my God, I would love mm -hmm. that. You would look great in that waistcoat. Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay, should we, let me just read some comments. Okay. Aw. Bye. I okay, think she probably, probably a while ago now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I just joined, but I need this refresher before Chain of Iron. Nice. We get it. Honestly, I rereading it, I was like, you forgot everything. <laughs> I was like, how'd you forget all of this? <laughs> Um, I feel like I've forgotten so much. Yes, exactly. Mm. I <laughs> there were so many moments yeah. that I forgot. I uh, I don't even know like how to even put into words. We stand Magnus always. Yes, always. He's I've never hated Magnus ever. Like he was my favorite from the start. His personality. <gasps> Can we talk about Christopher? I love Christopher. I think oh. he's my favorite character. <laughs> I was so mad, like, reading it the second time, I was so mad because I feel like he barely had, like, anything. Yeah, he, like, he doesn't really The whole thing talk. was, like, yeah, like, Thomas, we had, like, him and Thomas and Thomas Alistair complete. and Christopher. Mm -hmm. If we don't get more of them in Chain of Iron, I'm going to start a petition. Like, I really <laughs> want yeah. to see them. I think that they're so interesting. Like, yeah, there's so much that can happen. And, like... Looking at the family tree, like Christopher and Grace might up like end up like together, is and that, I barely is that know. Like for us? So no, I heard it's like not a family tree. Okay, that's good. I heard that it's not accurate, <laughs> but I'm not good. sure what's accurate and what's not. Like what's yeah. accurate, like what's going on? Because apparently Cassie said that she had to change some stuff because she wasn't sure if she was gonna do this series. So yeah. like some of the stuff is like not well done. So yeah, I don't know. Doesn't that mean then that Jesse and Grey, not Grace, Jesse and Lucy, Lucy mm -hmm. have a child? Lucy yeah. gets with a ghost. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucy the way that you just said that. <laughs> Unless he becomes resurrected in the next book. Which mm -hmm. I think he's getting resurrected. Likely. I yeah. think he's getting resurrected. Like when he 
gave his last breath to um I'm forgetting names left, right, and center. Um Ma what was about James? James? <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy and so sad at the same time because I'm like, wow, my homie, Jesse. I know, but like Christopher, I just want more moments like with Christopher. And yeah, in the next yes. book, I better get some Alistair in. Did I just Alistair? What? Yeah, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Sorry, I like forgot his whole name. I'm like forgetting everything. James too. But don't worry. Alistair is literally. I just. I think that the the plot of them together is like so interesting. It's mm. so interesting because honestly, if Alistair would have done the things that he did to like that to me in school, I would hate this man for the rest of my yeah. life. I'd be like, yeah. you're horrible. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's so interesting, and I feel like because Alistair is getting a redemption arc, we don't need a Grace redemption arc, okay? There's, no. I cannot forgive her, because, Get away. you know, Alistair was a kid, and kids yeah. do stupid things, we say really mean things, like, and are just sometimes, but you are grown, you're not grown, you're like a teenager, <laughs> but like, yeah. I know, I would not be over here, like, slapping bracelets on people, like, you're under my spell now. No. Yuck. This Ew. brace, I actually hate this bracelet. <gasps> when she took it off, I, I want to so cut it off. James got to his mm -hmm. He's like, I'm actually not in love with her. And then she put it back on. Oh, yeah. Oh, so there's like so many theories about like who's gonna like figure out that something's wrong with the bracelet. And that still people are saying like, figure it out. <laughs> I just, I think for me, like in my video, I was like, it's either gonna be um, Tessa or it's gonna be Magnus. And since yeah. Magnus is sticking around, mm -hmm. like in the end of the book, he says like he's gonna stick around. Yeah, yeah. I think that he's gonna like figure. I think, I think he's gonna figure it out. I feel like Tessa and him are gonna talk or something. She's gonna be like something. I know Tessa knows something's up. I think te like Tessa is like really suspicious at the end of the book. She was like, mm -hmm. well, "What's going on? This marriage was way too soon. Like, what's happening?" And also like the scene where where she was like in the bedroom when uh, like James had just gotten hurt, like, and he came back from the demon, like the sh the shadow play where it was vile and everything, and they were in the room, and then Grace comes to visit. Mm -hmm. She like when she was leaving the room, she was really suspicious. So I really think that she's gonna mm -hmm. know. I think maybe like if matthew matthew like maybe shares like that something's wrong something's weird because i feel like if somebody because of everything that's happening and everything is so go 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 because there's these attacks happening people sick nobody can like pinpoint like what's wrong with everybody which is why yeah. also i think like we can't that's why like the thing with matthew his like alcohol problem is kind of being pushed to the back burner is because so much is happening so i feel like the same thing is happening with james and the bracelet because nobody can just pay attention in the sense because everything is happening so they can't like I, i'm telling you it's, it's kind of the thing where there's something wrong and you know something's wrong but you're so busy that you're just not gonna look at it and the second mm -hmm. that you have a time to breathe i feel like the second that thing like they have a moment they are gonna figure it out and i really mm -hmm. hope they do yeah. because that bracelet just needs to be i don't know eviscerated <laughs> can we talk about tatiana's um clothes and how she hasn't changed it in several years. That's so gross. Wait, wait, wait. Can I just, wait, like, did you guys like, I don't know if your copy of the book had the scene, like the wedding scene with Will and Tessa. Did you guys oh, like yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, do you want me to tell you a little bit? Like, I'm yes. just, basically it was just like a wedding, it was a wedding scene. So there, it's like an extra mm -hmm. chapter in the book. So essentially like, the, I'm not gonna spoil it for you because I want you to read it. So maybe I can send you like a link to it or send you screenshots because you need to experience it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so you need to read it. But there was like, the main essence of it was that the way that she came up to like Will and Tessa at their wedding when everybody's about to leave, she was like, this is gonna be the happiest day of your life. Insin like this insinuating there's never gonna be a happy day ever again Oof. and i was like jeez i was <laughs> like that is horrible i hope she dies in the next book <laughs> same mm -hmm. she needs to she's go she's horrible i don't like her at all. no she's just so like i get i get her grief but your dad literally was so weird he turned into a worm and Big he was doing worm. things with demons <laughs> i'm never gonna and forget that Yes, and he, he shouldn't have been messing around with them. Like, mm. <laughs> what else is there to say? Yeah, and then, so 
her mm-hmm. husband like I'm so sorry this happened and then your son died it's just like so much is happening and everything it's just sad to me because I feel like she instead of grieving with her family like Gabriel and Gideon like they're right there they're her mm-hmm. like siblings but instead of grieving with them she was just like no I need to just have this deep hate because sometimes yeah. hating people is better than like dealing with the grieving like because yeah and that's like her life source i feel like the, the day yeah. she's gonna stop hating them is the day she dies i seriously believe yeah. so. she's yeah. just gonna wither <laughs> die dust we are just yeah. dust and shadows oh man I don't like how she hates all her family, though. Like, it's your family. Yeah. You should love your family unconditionally, unless they're, like, absolute bastards. But <laughs> like they're not. Demon. But I just wish she liked them. Especially Will. Will's the soundest guy. He's the nicest guy ever. Yeah. Yes. You hate him. How? You can't. There's no, there's no possible way to hate him. Yeah. I don't it know. Just make you laugh. He's... Yeah. I just can't hate Will. Honestly, when Cordelia and um, Will were dancing, it was so beautiful to me. Like, it was like, I got really emotional because there were like moments when you were reading Infernal Devices that even though, you know, some, you know, in most YA books, like they're going to end up together. But it was like, there were so many moments where I was like, he is so like hurt and he's so messed up. And the fact that now years later, we're seeing him dance with his like daughter-in-law, it's like, so like full circle for me like seeing him grow and like be this dad and uh and then there was like i think was it in tales from the shadow hunter academy where there was like a moment where they were where will was like will and tessa were like arguing because she was like don't give james this weapon or something and i thought it was like i can't believe that he's a dad and like he has kids and he raised these kids and yeah, I just can't hate Will. It's like <laughs> I'm gonna just start crying right here. It was it was so beautiful to just Did see him. Did you cry when was it the epilogue of Clockwork Princess? Yes. Mm-hmm. When he was on, I already like he's what was gonna dead. happen. Yeah, when I saw the epilogue, I was just like, yeah. So you're just gonna have to cry right now. Just just start <laughs> doing it because it's gonna happen. I don't know. That was terrible. Ugh. I feel like that's one of the reasons it. I haven't reread it is because like do I want to oh. put myself in clockwork yeah. angel like clockwork Never. princess I cannot cannot <laughs> okay let's read some comments right before hi Em hello. Hello. hello I don't think she's read the book <laughs> yeah, I have not read the book so <laughs> but I had this oh thank you for coming thank you for coming in yeah, oh the braces. God. Yeah. My question is like, mm-hmm. when the boy showers, does he keep his freaking bracelet? Like, is there any time in his life where he takes the damn bracelet off and has like a bracelet? <laughs> like, oh shit, I don't like her, and then he snaps it back on. He's like, I like her again. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, does he wear like, it to the shower? shower. He's just like wearing, wearing it. it. <laughs> like, oh, I don't no. know. That's just me. He's, he's getting a massage. The thing is. <laughs> I think you have. I don't know if you take stuff off. Like, surely he realized when he's getting the massage, like, oh, I don't actually like her, and then he puts on, oh, I'm in love. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is the the thing that like pisses me off so much is that because um, it's so everyone knows that he has this thing for Grace. Like, you know how we were saying, like, one day someone's gonna realize and they're gonna say, like, take it off. There's something going on. But the thing is that they worked it in so like intricately that no one is detecting. That this is a problem like they're just like oh yeah like he's always had a thing for her at the moment this cordelia thing is happening blah 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 but if he was mm. ever to make it very clear and obvious that he still like loves grace i don't think anyone would question like what he's thinking <laughs> if that makes sense yeah that makes sense. honestly i think that if he ever has a conversation with like any of them will or like magnus or tessa like if he explains his frustrations because he knows that there's something with cordelia but because of the bracelet he thinks that he has stronger feelings for grace but yeah. i feel like if he ever has a moment where he explains his thoughts and it, the why why he's acting like this and all of that i feel like they can detect it and i feel like there's just something in the what i think was i think did i quote this i forgot what i i try not to tab this time because if i could i would tab this whole book but 
<laughs> like there's this part on like page 421 where he's like i wonder sometimes now if it was a dream james said i i idealized her i suppose as a child as children do but it was a child's dream of what love should be and must be i believed love was pain and when i bled i bled for her and the reason why like i think that it's so interesting that he says that is because when when i see this i think about all of the people that have gotten into like toxic relationships and they mm. think that this love is like what it's supposed to be and that love is supposed to hurt and you're supposed to give up so much for this person so mm. i feel like even though you know we're in a fantasy world there's so many moments in this book where it feels like she's driving home a point that's happening in the real world like this like i've had friends unfortunately who have been in toxic relationships where they've like thought that this is love like them the person hurting them this much and asking for so much from them this is the way that they show love when you know i feel like if he ever has a moment to talk with his dad or his mom and they can explain to him that's not something that has ever happened for us or the people that are still together if he even talks to like gideon or if he even talks to gabriel like they've all had that type of love it's like he just needs a moment <laughs> there needs to be a moment where they just chill out and be like let's not talk about demons let's talk about grace let's talk about the situation and let's yeah. figure this out you they have to that know. saying for Herondales where it's like you're you only love once love once yeah i was like you need so to so he's so he's no. so adamant that he only loves grace and that's because the Herondale saying i only love once but he right. has such a good example of proper love, like right in front yes. of his eyes. Okay, yeah. right. Right. so hard. It's hard to right. say. Like, <laughs> right. Like she has like this. Parents are, are going through it, and they have issues, and yet she's still unfair. <laughs> like, mm. I there is just so much like happening with Grace that it's, and I think it's so important. Like you said he has like real life examples of what love needs to be and he's still like mm. no this is love guys <laughs> and it's <laughs> and i don't know why for him it was never a red flag that his parents love was never like this or his yeah. uh uncle's love or whoever else like around him it, it's not like that and i remember the scene like rereading it again it really infuriated me was when she was like let's leave everybody here me and you like we run away we we don't we don't do with yeah. the shadow hunters we leave everything and yeah. it just really reminds me of the point of if you know anything about like if you know anything about james what's the most important thing to him his family yeah. so you're asking him to leave everybody for you because you have nothing to lose your brother is dead your your birth parents are not here like they're gone they're dead as well so you have nothing to lose and he has every single thing to lose and that's not what love is like sure there's compromises but giving up every single thing for you yeah. that's insane that is toxic yeah and you know like we're lucky because we were sitting back here and talking about it so like when people go through what he's going through they don't see it until something really huge happens like he, there's gonna i just feel it there's gonna be like a huge moment where he's gonna be like wait and it's so hor like i forgot who's talking about this i think i, I was like saw this on tumblr or something but somebody was like you know the moment that he's gonna realize that she's been manipulating him and that he was a victim and that this isn't like she used him and all of this is gonna be so heartbreaking and i don't know if you can come back from that because how would i react if i like found that out i'd yes. bury the bracelet actually what yeah. should he do with the bracelet oh my god i don't know he's going to the shadow world you just chuck it somewhere yeah. you know he's there, some demon like yeah <laughs> I don't ever want to hear about that bracelet. See, reference the bracelet. Never. No. no. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Let's just, yeah, let's give it. And you know what's so crazy is that I know that in Chain of Iron, we're going to find out, like, how much more connected Belial is with everybody. With mm -hmm. Tatiana. And the fact mm -hmm. that they're, like, sending her to uh, the sisters. What are they? I forgot their name. The Iron Sisters. The Iron Sisters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so smart. Like she's literally gonna be right in the heart Not of one of the most important parts of their whole community, like the whole Shadowhunter world. And she's mm -hmm. gonna be able to have so much power there. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's yeah. so insane to me. And I feel like another thing is like if we can talk about the clave and how similar they are to like governments yeah. around the world. It's it's it was so maddening because every single book that we read they never do anything no matter how far along we are in the future they never do anything until people genuinely get hurt yeah really yeah. Bad. and even then they don't do fully what they need to do mm -hmm. it's, it's like very cool. and it's like, like so like similar to like government yeah yeah mm. I feel like I, I feel like I want to go like this and like breathe in like the essence of this book and remember it because the thing is like let me just say when you go into Chain of Iron, it's just like it's fine. Like you you don't question things. You're not like wait like what happened. The way she does it in every book is actually magic. I don't know how she does it without a recap like previously in the Vampire Diaries or something. <laughs> But like, I'm just like, oh yeah, I remember that happening. But if I'm sitting here right now and you were to ask me any question, I would just be like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> and I feel like her and like Sarah J. Master the same thing. We're just like, we're getting. So I feel like if anybody else would do that, if any other author would be like, previously, I'd be like, this is so dumb. You think I'm stupid, and then I don't remember. <laughs> but they do it, and I'm like, oh yes, mm. I. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Imagine uh, if they did that previously on Chain of Gold. <laughs> James was <laughs> stupid and didn't take off the bracelet. <laughs> we will find out what happens to the bracelet. No, the narrator like introduces themselves and they're like, well, I'm James and Cordelia's kid from the future. At the end, I would be like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> That was so frustrating. Oh my god, when James left Cordelia on the dance floor. Oh, oh. No. Okay, see, but can I just say, can I just say, I'm sorry for yelling because everyone's wearing headphones on. Like, no, so it's okay. okay. Just... I love Matthew's heart because he sees things. He's like, he's like that guy, like a wallflower. Let's call him that. Like he sees everything that's going on and he's so in tune with it all. Whereas like James can be so dang Dumb. like <laughs> to shake his stupid little puny shoulders yeah. but like Matthew is so switched on and so he was like okay she's alone I'm gonna step in like I just uh. yeah mm. <laughs> he's very and honestly yeah and rereading it again I was still just as angry I think I was more angry I was like are you kidding are you an idiot because here's the issue it's like even now in the 21st century if somebody did that to you it's still disrespectful so Same. like what is your what was your like <laughs> what's the problem you're just like a complete idiot but i just when the second time that she put the bracelet on him like the second time around i think i was paying more attention but like the way that he described it was so horrible like he was like it felt like searing pain was going down like and i was like if yeah. I felt that, like for me, you know, because sometimes there's certain jewelry I can't wear, so I would like immediately take it off and throw it away. But he's so like, but Grace gave it to me, so like I'm gonna wear it forever. It's like, yeah, yeah. Maybe no. he enjoys. Maybe he enjoys the pain. He's into That's like such a hair weird and stuff. Thing. <laughs> oh god, the Herondales are so bad with pain. <laughs> it's just uh. so like I don't know. I've never met a single Herondale that's never had a tragic story. So true. Yeah. Even know. I remember when we were looking at like um who was it like Stephen Herondell, like Jace's father. His yeah. whole story is so messed up. Yeah. Like he was in love with this girl and then he was like, No, I'm gonna go be with this other woman because Valentine's controlling me. And I was just like, That's horrible. And I remember we met Amadis and this is why she hated Jace so much because she probably was thinking about Steven and she was like, yeah, well, he broke my heart and he was horrible. And I remember that she had to stay with her in, well, where was this? Idris? And it was, it was so like, I was like, oh, I, cause oh. I personally, if I would have been hurt that badly, I would be like, no, you guys are never stepping foot near me again. You guys are horrible. <laughs> don't, don't ever do this again to Restraining me. Restraining order. Restra restraining order but i seriously every single book that i read of cassandra claire's no matter who the only person that i would say remotely had me like as attracted to them as will was maybe julian but like there was moments where i was like you're a little bit too dark for me i was like sir you are oof, like you're a, yeah. little bit, a little bit too much I was, 
I was like, really horrified sometimes. He was just like doing weird things. And I was like, no. Did he have, did he have a room of just paintings of Emma? Yeah. Okay, I would find that I so creepy. I thought it was creepy. so romantic. Like, yeah, I'm out of here. I was reading it, but now that you're saying it, I'm like, oh, like it is creepy. Like, <laughs> but that reveal, like, I was like, oh my god, this is like this no. Is but the way that he said it, I was like, yes, okay, I guess, I guess we're doing it. I was like, I guess we're gonna forgive him for this. <laughs> I love that. I will be so far out if someone did that for me. Hello, hey. Emily. I feel like you're like Emily. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This like, reminds me. This yeah. reminds me of like you know when you read a book for class. Yes. And, yeah. and you read it. And you like you guys are like having a group discussion and they're like, okay, <laughs> no, okay, Sarah, like what was your favorite part? And you're like. <laughs> Frozen I don't know, paralyzed. but I agree with whatever they just said. And I'm just <laughs> I like, agree with the next person's statement. No, and they're like, you're the first person to talk. And you're like, well, I agree with what I said. <laughs> it's like a, this is just, uh, I can't even like deal with this whole, whole thing. There's so much that happens though. Like, I don't know why when I was reading it the first time, I thought it was so big. But this time it was like, I realized it was like 400 pages or 500 something. Yeah. And I was like, wait, this went by so quick. I was, yeah. but so much happens, and I feel like that's to testament of like her writing, uh, that you realize how much she's gotten better at getting straight to the point. Yeah. Straight to the point. Same thing with Sarah J. Mass. Like when I read you. House of Earth and Blood, I was like, "Whoa! How do we just do all of this in the first book?" Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh God. Yes, I remember that book. I loved it. It was uh, fantastic. <laughs> Phenomenal. Um, um, can I wait for the next one? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, did you hear that Cassandra Clare is coming out with an adult, a book for adults? Yes. Really? I, really? I did not hear this. As a comment on a video. And they're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think next year or something like that. I may be wrong. They may be wrong. Wrong information. But <laughs> they said it could be like adult fantasy. And like obviously we're seeing a trend with all authors doing this and you know getting the kick out of it. I really mm. hope she does it well because if she does, that is gonna be epic. <laughs> it's imagine, not very Imagine Sarah G. Mass ex Cassandra Clare book. What would I think they'd have a lot of conflict actually, because I feel like they're No, Sarah will be her. like, We need to kill this person off. And then yeah. Sarah's gonna be like she was like, no. So she's gonna meet this guy, and then she's gonna, and book two, she's gonna be like, no, I hate this guy. And then yeah. Cassandra's like, no, they need to like have a <laughs> epic story of why they can't be together. And then yeah. in the in the final book, they, they have to be like, oh, there's like this really weird way that we can be together, but it's gonna take a lot of work, and we might die. So <laughs> it would be a lot. So much confusion. <laughs> Mm. yeah but i feel like they could write it but it was just like i don't know mm. you know what i think about them they're just so like separate entities even though oh, yeah. they make you feel the same type of thing they're yeah. just like too separate for me to be like yes write a book but i feel like cassandra claire would be a great adult writer because i feel like a lot yeah. of a lot of things in ya are holding her back same thing with like sarah j mass i remember when uh there, like it was just a discussion of whether or not like the new a court of silver flames was gonna be an adult that book or not and they a court of a is, do you know um ya and like na is NA oh, like NA. Is it? yeah okay 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 yeah no i think isn't it an adult a new no, adult so i think it recategorize the whole um bloody series because there was too much sexy scenes so they made it all into adult but the thing is like new adult isn't an actual like in the publishing world it's not an actual thing it's just something that we've all made it's kind of like dark academia like if you say it in the publishing world they'll be like oh it's a trend right so same mm -hmm. with new adult it hasn't been like fully established as a genre um that they mm -hmm. write to you so we're just we're just going with it and if we keep doing this then they'll eventually be like okay this is a thing and we're gonna make a whole Thing for it. <laughs> so, oh, that's kind of cool, though. We've created a movement of young adults. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like it should be a thing. Yeah, because like mm. you know, there's rarely anything in the the twenty something area, like characters who are in their twenties, that isn't a romance. And I'm like, it, if we yeah. can have other things, like it could be a thing. <laughs> yeah, but. yeah. 
I feel like there's just like there were so many scenes in like this book where I was just like, just do it, just <laughs> like yeah. just do it. What are you waiting for? I was Take like, off your toes. I was watching. like, you already no like reading. <laughs> just might as well just do it. Like, what do you? I don't know. Yeah. It's just so annoying because I feel like they're so held back and. I, I think there was, like, speculation that there were so many, like, scenes that Sarah J. Maxx had to cut out from, like, the previous yeah. books because our publisher was, like, that's yeah. too much. And I yeah. want every single scene. I'm, like, just give it to me. Because I remember I was reading Kingdom of Ash. And I was, like, I was so angry. Really I was, Ash. like, are you kidding? I was, like, could you just, like, just tell me that it happened without being, like, in a faded to black. I was, like... <laughs> <laughs> I weirdly, I weirdly like Fade to Black. I don't, I'm that person because when I was reading Court of Silver Flames, I was just like, like, I <laughs> I think I'm going to be the opposite. I'm going to be like, like, yes. Hey, I get it. Like, can we just, can we just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. And I was like reading in public as well. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, like, have you? Yeah. Have you ever like listened to an audiobook like a romance? That's why I don't listen to romance audiobooks anymore because it's horrifying. I one time I was like in class and we were doing something. We were just having like free time because I did the work or something and I was just sitting. I think I was reading like uh I think Take a Hint Danny Brown or something and out of nowhere it was just like boom and I was like I'm in the middle of class right now. Are my headphones <laughs> loud? Can somebody hear me? Like I had to put my head down because I was like if I look up, everybody's gonna know, and it's gonna imagine be if you're um, fully connected to like their speakers, and then just started going through the speakers. Oh my god, nightmare! I would have to change schools and just never be there ever again. Oh my god! What um like I don't know how it works. What grade are you in? What year are you in at school? Oh my god! Well, I'm well. I'm about to graduate. It's because like the the systems are different, and like I feel like you got yeah, you guys so are like, weird. smarter. Because like in the way like I I'm a senior in high school so okay. I'm almost done and I'm gonna go to college next year oh. so but it's like you guys have what is it I think it's like you guys do you guys have middle school or you guys don't and you we, guys we do like years so like the last year is year twelve <laughs> we don't have like seniors or like middle school or is there like some other name freshmen like we don't do that. Yeah. Which I it's so cool that that have, like names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like ours is. I hate being like freshman, junior, senior, whatever. It's so dumb. Mm. But yeah, I we think it's like so much years. We yeah. like our last year in secondary school is six years. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, that's the same for us. So like primary school ends at year six, and then like year seven and twelve is high school. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Primary school. That's what we, we have six too. class, we though. Have, like, we don't have year six. Oh, okay. we have like What's the fifth. <laughs> I think we have to like fifth, and then we have like secondary. So we have like sixth, seventh, eighth as like yeah. one separate school. We call it like middle school, and then we have the rest. So seven, like what is it? Like sixth, seventh, eighth, or uh, like the rest of it. Like after that, eight, nine, ten. Like we all have after that, right? So then till twelfth grade. I'm sorry, I'm just like thinking about the way thing. And then we have like high school, which is like eight, is it? No, it's nine to 12. And then you graduate and then you go to college yeah. or like university. I still don't know what the difference is. And I've like had oh. a very smart person tell me, mm. but I still don't get it. So like, we go to uni here, like we go to university here, like barely, we don't, I don't know, like we have colleges, but they're like private institutions. So they cost mm -hmm. just as much as university. And then we have mm -hmm. to pay, like, I'm not going to say under it, but it just has like different things that are like more like a pay once situation. It's so, it's so complicated, yeah. but mostly. Did university. you have, did you have to wear, Eden, did you have to wear a school uniform in secondary I wore school uniform all throughout. Like, even if you go to public, you have to. <laughs> I, I actually kind of liked it. Because yeah. you didn't have to, like, choose outfits every day. So it was kind of practical. I liked it because, like, if there's a divide between, you know, like, a, a financial divide between students, you can never tell, which is, yeah. like, so important. And that's why I feel like uniforms are necessary. But then, like, mm. I don't know. I think I've watched too much movies and TVs, like, that are set in the US. And I'm like, that is so unfair. Yeah. She doesn't get the new I want to live in the US, just go to secondary school there, like be yeah. a freshman or a senior. Oh, very yes. great. It's not all that. Trust me, the movies are a yeah. lie. And yeah. 
Your high school is horrible. <laughs> no, <laughs> imagine having, having like a footballer like boyfriend no. and like he gives you your jacket. That doesn't my, not my dreams. <laughs> Well, I mean, also mine's completely different because I'm from New York, so we're all like very city. So we don't have like we have yeah, sports yeah. teams, but we have like basketball and soccer, and sometimes yeah. we have like lacrosse, okay. but we don't have like football, which is like more like in like Texas and like other states. But mm. honestly, like none, all of high school is a sham. Really? It's all <laughs> it's a sham. It's it's really not it really. I, I went in with it, but like. Oh my god, like I could potentially find the love of my life. And you go into school and you'd see all that dudes. all these people are idiots. And you're like, whoa. And honestly, <laughs> I'm sorry, I it's just it's so. true. I feel like because I graduated like this is so scary. I graduated high school like eight, nine years ago. <laughs> I feel oh like <laughs> No, it's fine. It's also like different because like our schools are different. It's like I don't even know. I can't even <laughs> it's just like a whole situation with school and then we have college and it's all the movies are alive i feel like i hate movies like, like, so i'm so sorry to like divert but are you going <laughs> from the book but are you going to move away for college like that is so weird to me because we all stay at home and we just drive <laughs> like, you're I gonna America, well america you move away i feel like a lot yeah Mm -hmm. yeah well i have the option to but i'm not sure what i'm gonna do i applied i but I, again like i live in new york city so i feel like i don't need to go out like i already i already have what everybody like wants but maybe yeah. like i could dorm potentially like dorming is an option because there's like buildings that you can dorm with but we a lot of people also commute so but for yeah. me, it's just like upstate New York is not where I want to be. Like I've always loved the city since I was younger, so it's just like a part of me, and I don't think I would ever want to leave for a long period of time. So like that's yeah. why I, I, I probably will end up staying. But I know a lot of people who do leave, and they like it because they really want the independence from their mm -hmm. parents and everything. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if with the city being so big, even if you like dorm, it could still feel like you're getting your independence either way. Because even though your parents might be closer than if you like go to Boston or go somewhere else, it's still like a big difference. So it's not, an, it doesn't matter, I think. In my opinion. So to me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> in our so house, I, get it. I think it's like a mixture. Cause if you live in the city that your um, college is in, people usually um, like just commute up, commute up there. But mm -hmm. um, if you don't, you usually stay on campus, which is what I will be doing next semester. But this semester, absolutely fucked because COVID. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. I had a friend who's in a dorm year, and she couldn't. It was so sad. So sad. Oh, I know. Sad. I'm and happy that, semester. like, it's senior year. So, like, for high school, I can just be done. And then, like, college, like, my college years are not messed up because I can just, like, mm. have my whole experience later because – Honestly, yeah. high school is a sham. <laughs> it's just so horrible. It's a sham, but it's like it's like a whole lot of everything that you think is gonna happen doesn't happen, and it's like every like it was one of it's one of the best times of my life because I feel like I've changed the most during this period because oh my god, in middle school, horrible, but like high school, I really like found friends like that. You know, I feel like the older you get, you finally realize like the type of friends that you want. And I feel mm -hmm. like in high school, you have a little bit more freedom, but then like college and then when you're an adult, you have even more freedom. So I think it's different for everybody involved. But yeah, it's just like a whole, whole new world every time. And for me, I think I kind of do like it in the end because um, every time that we have like a break, so like between uh, primary school to like secondary, then to like high school, we have like they're different important times in our lives but they're divided yeah. up so you know that like change is coming but sometimes it's annoying because you're not on the same pace as people in your school or something so it's like a whole it's a whole thing i think everybody's experience is unique to themselves so cool yep <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh okay let me just okay okay i'm, I'm so, so scared ready. i'm so I'm scared so ready. Ready. You guys read it? No, I read no. the first chapter. Okay, let me tell you. I read the first chapter. Um, there's no spoilers here because I respect everybody here. <laughs> I respect your need to read it. I read the first chapter and I was like, 
what is this? I was like, Sarah J. Mass really took adult to another level. I was like, Sarah, the first man, what just happened? Yes, a lot of stuff happened in the first chapter, but it's like the the first chapter. I cannot believe like half of the stuff that happened in the first chapter alone. I was like, that's kind of whoa, exciting. and I had to put it down because I waited years for this book. So I'm like, yeah. I cannot <laughs> read this in two days yeah. and then leave because. Cassie and Anessa's book has been, like, my dream, my fantasy for so long that I feel like if I read it quickly, I'm going to be sad because then I'm going to be like, wow, did that really just end? Is Lucian's book afterwards, or is it someone else's? What is it? Uh, Lu- Lucian? 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 Lucian. Sorry. Oh, I, I, I Lucian. The next book will be on Elaine or Asriel. Like, I, I just, I have a feeling. So, who knows? Mm. Honestly, I just don't like Elaine that much. Oh my god, I saw someone shipping Tamlin with Aelin. Elaine. Just because Aelin is submissive. Aelin? Oh, oh, Elaine? Yeah. Elaine, sorry. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. So I think, I think, like, actually, I can't say. <laughs> so well, sorry. Does it actually happen well, in the book? Well, no, no I don't I, think it will. But I think for me personally, I just don't, I don't get why, like, people are just, like, throwing Lucian out. I'm like, whoop. No, he's, oh, he's really? lovely, but like the thing is, I mean, you've read up to, until this book, like, so you know that Elaine is just she's trying to figure herself out and she's not really interested, like, yeah. And so, I think that's really important. And Sarah J. Mass needed a character like that, so it's it's very it's interesting. Like Matthew, yeah, yeah. yeah like, oh my god, <laughs> I, could, I, could. No. Wow. I, just, I just okay, I think for me, she really like made me angry just because like, I feel like she just, her sisters were doing so much and she was just sitting there, like just doing nothing. And she was like in her la la land and she was just like flowers and teas and cookies. And I'm just like, she could have wor- been making like vegetables instead of flowers. She could have been like, planting vegetables. Exactly. Oh She's my like, God. No, I want a rose. <laughs> It's pretty. Like, you, you need food. Like roses are gonna feed you. Like I, I don't know. Like the rest of the world. Like, and that's why I feel like reading like Nesta's point of view, which uh, this is not this it's is not really a lecture so for like. But, but it's like Nesta. I think the reason why like Nesta is like one of my most favorites is because she's literally like. She's like me. I get her. Like, I get why she's so like such a bitch sometimes. It's because like, she went through so much stuff and. Honestly, like seeing Farah and like Rhysand from her perspective, even just in the first chapter, everything is different. Like I, everything is different, and it just makes me so sad that like it's not a spoiler, but it just makes me so sad that like people are so hard on her when it's like if you guys, everybody deals with trauma differently, and you know, luckily for Farah, she had Rhysand, and Rhysand understands her. But it's like no matter how much like Cassian is trying to get into the bubble. Like, there's so much trauma there. Like, there's yeah. so many things that she had to tackle that even, like, Farah didn't have to tackle. And there was, like, for example, and that's why, like, looking at Elaine's character just pisses me off because I just think that she did absolutely nothing. I'm just like, oh, let's just plant some flowers. Like, no, you're going to starve tomorrow if you plant these flowers. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's, yeah, it, like, I don't know. It's a weird thing, but you're right. I feel like Nessa's character really embraces, like, PTSD, like it really shows the the dark side of it. Whereas, like with Feyre, we saw that as well. But it's that you know. That but it was whole- resolved in a sense. Yeah, mm. and Elaine, she had her own trauma, but I guess she she dealt with it in a different way. And much like Cassian, like it's hard to explain, but it's just that some people get over things very quickly and they're able to move on, and then some people just really like wallow in that hurt and that pain, and it takes them a while. And I like that there was a balance of that. Like you saw people who were moving on and then you saw people who were just really feeling it. Yeah. Is there any like new characters introduced into A Court of Silver Flames or is it just? Um, I don't I think, think so. I think for the, I mean, obviously you have a new, a new conflict and a new villain of sorts. So there's yeah, that. Yeah. But, um, not that moment, think, isn't, like, isn't it like mostly like, it basically picks up from like, the end of the war it's like a, it's like six months afterward or something like that yeah so there's some people like that uh, if you remember because i don't want to say their names they might be spoiler but it's just like there's some people that were like left unresolved mm-hmm. that you knew like there nothing happened like they were a villain but they like nothing was resolved so yeah. i feel like 
um, it's it's. I love books like this, uh, which is why like uh, I also think that you could do this with Rowan of Glass, where we can get like Dorian's book because I feel yeah. like it would be so interesting to see from his perspective of like after the war because oh it's God. not easy like after the war. There's still like things to do, so I feel like mm. you could do that as well. So I think it was interesting that she picked that time period to like go in. She didn't do it like a year after. She did it like approximately like six months, I think. Yeah. It's it's so good. I like at first I really didn't know how I felt about it, and I was saying to like a few of my co co-workers when I got to like chapter fifty, and I was like crying. I was like, oh my god, this is like a five star <laughs> read for me. So I know, was, and that's what like Cassandra Clare and Sarah J. Mass do. Yeah. Like seriously, like I was reading it the second time, and there were moments in my head where I was like, do I even like like it? And then yeah. like you know, and then I I read, and then the last like. 100 pages i was like yeah. this is why this is a favorite this is why they write this is why they do everything because everything makes sense and yeah. it's just so beautiful what they do in their writing because they they wrap you up and they bring you to the book and you're reading it and like you don't even remember when they become your favorites yeah like, you don't even remember oh. and for me like i don't know i don't know Cassie is just so like for me, he's like an ideal person that like I feel like he's he'd be a perfect match. Oh, I don't know. And it's not even about that. It's like he understands. It's just like oh, <laughs> he's more than like oh. Yeah, well, there he was understands. Like, it's a spoiler. Like I don't want to try to is a whole other person in this book. And I was about to I was about to beat him up because I was like, sir, chill out. But I'm not gonna say anything else because that's that. So Reason. <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> Moving on. No more. No more explanations because I will spoil it. Um, okay. Um, oh, okay. I'm with Eden. I was reading it on a live show and I was cringing so bad. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Honestly, I love it. I'll just be like, yes, they finally did what they were to do. <laughs> I feel like as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair no, enough. you can finish yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> I want, to, I want to hear your perspective. <laughs> I say, for me, uh, I don't know if I'm like, I'm not childish or anything like that, but I'm like that person in a movie where I'm like, oh my God, they're kissing. Like, and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. so cute. I love that. It and happens I feel to me like, all the time. I don't read like a lot of romances. I've never really been big on it. So I'm so like heavily into fantasy. And while there is like a lot of those romances, as you know, they're very fade mm -hmm. to black. So I'm so used to that. I'm like, yeah, you guys, you can do <laughs> what you do i'm just gonna move on and so this book was like and then he and i'm like oh my god <laughs> i was just sitting there and my husband's sitting there he's like are you okay and i'm like i'm fine don't talk to me right now <laughs> Mini heart attack. oh my god but i feel like for me that's why i love adult like fantasy because it combines the two things that i love reading which is like romance yeah. and fantasy uh so yeah. like for me it's like yes because i'm like yes it's just, it gives me everything i wanted um yeah but i get what you're saying too there's there's some books that for example like uh sarah j mass uh, where you don't need it like it doesn't need to happen because yeah. the plot is really good but there's other books where it's like the plot is so boring that we need it because we're yeah. like okay like most fantasies need it i recently read like um the shades of magic book and uh, shades of magic is that what's called like the series name and yeah. i really love it because it is an adult fantasy but like the the romance is kind of like understated and it just made it all the more better for me like because that's just my thing but mm. i totally get it like for from blood and ash or is that what it's called oh you read that yeah, still. Yeah. i haven't read yeah. that and like i know that that's really for people who like a mix of fantasy and smart like that is mm. your sort of book <laughs> so, i swear if i read it and it doesn't deliver i'm gonna be so mad i'm gonna be it's like so 60 so pages and yeah. she went quick I mean, stuff was happening quick. Oh, I was I don't know, I just have to like buy a copy right now. <laughs> you should. Oh. It was good stuff. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. yeah, we're 18 when we go to college, most people. Uh uh, no, people who think that I'm a math has a lot. I was like, What are you talking about? You didn't even it's know okay. like, what chapter is it? They're like, Chapter like 50 something. I was like, No, that's yeah. nothing. I'm like, What are you? 
we're but not it's in just, the same book. It's all over. You need to read the oh, Black Dagger no. Brotherhood series. That is a book with smush oh, and I fantasy. I've seen that. Smush left, right, and center. No oh. details left untold. <laughs> it's so good. I've seen that around, but isn't it like a really long series? I don't know if that would want to read it. Yeah, like, I've, oh my god, I've read 16 or 17 of the books in the series because the characters, I just yeah. love them so much. They're so amazing. See, see, for me, like, the only author that I've done like Sarah J. Max and like the Sound of Care. So it's scary for me to do that for somebody else. But honestly, the most I've done that is like there'll be like books, like romance books where they're like brothers or there's like friends who are like introduced in the book that I yeah. Yeah. interested then I'll like read it. Um and but barely has there ever been a series that I I love the first book and then I love the second book. There's never been a time when like I love the second book more than like, the first book. I think except for like take a hint down that was the only one that I was like, wow, like this author really took it to another level with this one. But it's like hard with romance because for me I'm a strong believer in no more than four hundred pages, you better be done by four hundred. <laughs> like what are you doing with all this extra stuff? I get you. Okay, I think do that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like we're so Sorry. far from chain of gold. <laughs> It's okay, guys. It's, it's all connected in some way. It's Chain of Gold and chatting about other stuff. <laughs> We're just all so excited about, like, everything that's coming out. There's so much coming out, Literally. but it's making me forget that we're, like, in the pandemic. I'm just, like, forgetting mm. the fact that I can't go outside. Like, that's right. And I'm not going to do that, so let's mm. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's see. There's a bunch that I agree. Is this your favorite Patsy series? If so, why? If not, why? Is it our favorite, like, what was it? Like, Cassie series? Like, oh, like, um, like, series? No. <laughs> yeah, I'd say no, too. No. <laughs> because Which is your favorite, then? We'll always have my entire whole beating heart. Because it was, it's so nostalgic for me. And, like, I read it when I was in my like it's it's really something else i'm reading this now with more of like i feel like i've dipped my toes in the fantasy water a bit more <laughs> and so i'm like i enjoy this it is still five stars for me but i'm not you know like fangirling so hard over it as i would have been in those series and you know dark other vices as well is like probably second to that and then i know the, the little instruments because that one i loved but like it, it is my least favorite enough. yeah mind you this thing just wow um anyway but but yeah i i think i really enjoyed this one because it has my favorite characters now. like if they weren't there i don't know i don't know how to go. um yeah i agree i think it has to be like oh and the first one is like the infernal devices i love the infernal devices so much uh, but I love the dark artifices too. It's like the implant device with the dark artifices in this one. But I feel like yeah. it could be changed if I read Chain of Iron and something like a revolution happens. Like, it has to be like, I don't know, I don't know, like a revolution of a ghost art. I would be like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, this is the magic yeah. for Like, let's do it. So I would like to do something like that. I don't know. But, right now, but I wouldn't say, I feel like even though those the other books are my favorite i will say that every single book that she writes it gets quicker to read like it's easier to read every single time but she gets so much better out her world building it doesn't take as long really. yeah and i feel like one thing that was really interesting about this series is that you know how like in other books like for example the royal instruments we had to like we were introduced to the world but this time reading it even with like their friendships it wasn't like you would be to them they already had a friendship so it felt like yeah. i was like falling into a friendship already so like yeah. there wasn't like i much love that, that about I, had the book. To I love yeah. friendships in books like big friendships in books i l absolutely love that yeah and even like reading the second time i think like it was still it was still like hard to like place everybody but like i'm telling you by the second part of the book i'm, I'm telling you you're gonna know who everybody is and you're gonna be down path but mm -hmm. she still did a really good job in my opinion this friendship because every single person in there has a separate friendship with each other and it's so interesting to see with them mm. but i really think that Christopher was robbed and he was one like all i know about him is that he is 
a mad scientist and like he basically saved all their lives and it was so like horrible and he's funny. that halfway yeah and then he's funny <laughs> and then he's clumsy and that Ragnar fell is afraid of I him because he makes explosions yeah. so but much. I feel like he I feel like because he like towards the end of the book he, he got he got attacked I feel like he lost even more time with him when I think that every other out there and have their history on them that I think that you're missing a lot from but like you cut out for me but like I don't know if I just have really slow internet. <laughs> no you cut out for me too. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> just okay. I'm sorry. Sarah what's your favorite? <laughs> um so Chain of Gold has the potential of being my favorite if we lose the bracelet. But right now it's the Infernal Devices, 100%. Like, I think that's one of the first books that made me actually emotional because I never get emotional at books. And that was like when Will died, I just, I was mourning. It was just, it just really hurt me. Um, yeah. Then Chain of Gold, I want to say Chain of Gold, the second one. And then Dark Art Devices. No, I'm really sorry to them. But like, for some reason, Julian wasn't my favorite. Even though I like him, it's just he wasn't my favorite guy. And then yeah. the Moral Instruments. Sorry to them. They were good starters, though, to begin the journey. So, yeah. especially appreciating for them. <laughs> yeah, I think like there's a Moral Instruments also sentimental, but I don't think that like I would ever reread it. Like because yeah. I can read yeah. it again. I mean, more and I'm just gonna like it's gonna ruin it for me. Like, It'll be a different so, experience. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the tropes that were in that book, like that series, are like very early, like YA. The chills are one. I'm so mad. And honestly, for me, I never like really related to Clary as a character. I feel like yeah. when I met Tessa, I was like, yes. I was like, yes, you mm -hmm. get it. Like you're my favorite in that sense because she's like. She kind of reminds me of Cordelia, and I feel like that's why her and Cordelia are like competing for my number one spot because I yeah. love them both. Like I think because like Cordelia is like more in my age range, I guess now I would like relate more with her because mm -hmm. she's like everything that like I want to be, and I, and I, I see like what she does, and you know the, the way that she carries herself, I think is so unique. But like for me. Clary never did that for me um, in that sense. And I feel like even Jace, like I love Jace, but like it's nothing that I will ever feel that I like, don't feel for like Yeah. 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 Who's your favorite um, guy character in all the books? It's a big question here now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how could he will for me? Like how could I ever yeah. not pick him? Like, okay, so we could break the question up into like two parts where like one is like will because that's like the person that I would be like, yes, yeah, yes. Yes. but another one is Magnus. Like every single book that he's in, I'm like, yes, like he there's not a book. energy. Yeah, there's not a book. Like if there's ever a book where he's not in it, I don't want it. Like the, just throw it out. Like, like there's why don't we have Magnus? Like Magnus fixes everything, and it's not even that. And I feel like that's why him and Alex are so up there for me in couples. Like every time I see a scene with them, my heart is just exploding. Like it could be like the <laughs> most basic scene. It's like they're sitting on the couch, like yes. watching the show. And I'll be like, hey, yes, I want You're like almost in tears like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, touch the hand. Like literally it's like that. It's and I think like every time that I read their books, like anything, that's why a lot of people don't like the rest of the magic because they feel like nothing will happen and they feel like uh, you know they're gonna be fine. For me it doesn't matter because I just love reading from their perspective. So even though I mm -hmm. for me it feels even better knowing that they're gonna get out of it fine. I just love the couple that they are and yeah, just like the, I think mean, that's why I love the dark artists just so much, like just seeing Alex grow up and mm -hmm. like an adult. Like how is he an adult? <laughs> How are you a grown person now? Like you were, you were so little. Like I don't know. In my head, like I was just so I don't know. Just seeing them grow as well. They're like my favorite couple. I think. And Will and Tessa, I guess would be my second. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Y
yeah. <laughs> I feel like Will and Tessa for me will forever be goated. Like they are top tier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Marcus and Alex are but I don't know. I yeah, like, like, I really like them. Couple wise, I feel like even couple wise, I think Julie and Emma, they're so mm. unique. But I really yeah. They really fought to be together. There's nothing else that I can say. Like, they really fought it. Yeah. Even, even though, like, the a lot of stuff happened to Will. I feel like they really fought to be together. Like, it was like a real, like, waste to the time. Uh, we were guessing until the last second, like, are they gonna, is it gonna work? Yeah. And I feel like I haven't had that moment uh, since, like, the Mortal Instruments. Uh, like, is, is it gonna work? So, but for mm -hmm. me, I do really love them. But there's just so many couples that I just, like, it's overload. I can't even pick. Anytime I get to see, <laughs> like, Jason Clary, like, in the dark artifices, like they make appearances. Um, I think it's so interesting. And I think, that, aren't they gonna get like a storyline in the dark power? I think it's not the wicked power, I think it's called. Like the, 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 like the continuation of from the end of the dark artifices. I think it's like Drew and the. Oh, I think that, that's interesting. Who would have and Drew. Yeah. And I also think it's gonna be like Sebastian's son. Um. Mm -hmm. Like in it, and I think interesting. Yeah, it's all. Is it like Diego's brother? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh yes. yes! I'm so interested. I'm so interested to see because honestly, like the characters that I related a lot with were were from that series because it was more like our time. So like yeah. seeing, seeing so much more like of our modern time and then talking about like TV shows and like all that stuff. Yeah, um, it's so interesting. To I love it a lot. I feel like that's why I love the dark artist to get away with a lot of stuff. This is a bad Okay. What is, okay, so. Did your opinion change, like reading it again? Or like Sarah, like just hearing about like what happened again? Like, has your opinion changed at all? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe I was just slightly more pissed off about the whole band thing. <laughs> just the bracelet. It's really Sarah. It's just this bracelet. It's just I wish I could jump into the book and just take it off. But I don't think I don't know. Because watching the video, like nothing came up that I was like, oh conflicting motions with my past self and my present self. Yeah, I don't think so. How about you, Eden? I haven't, like, I, I read it for the first time at the beginning of this year, like last month. And so mm. now, because I had to pick up, um, I'm picking up Chain of Iron for work and I have to review it and stuff. So I was like, <laughs> I planned to read this when it came out and I just mm. kept putting it up. It's one of those things, like if I'm very excited for something, I will like push it away from me for as long as possible. That's I, what I'm I, doing I, with Act of Silver Flames. Yeah. Like you, it's, you're so it's literally sitting right there, and I won't touch it because I'm so. <laughs> I, I felt that way for like six months. So finally, I read it, and um, I don't know if I will ever reread it. I rarely reread, like just in general. Um, but I'm glad I read it just before picking up Chain of Iron because I feel like for me as a reader, that's necessary just because it's such a chunky fantasy. Like yeah. I said, it's really easy to get back into the world, and you won't find yourself like, what the heck is going on? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I just forget things very easily. <laughs> so, Same. Especially yeah. main character names. Oh. <clears throat> I literally forget them all the time. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? But yeah, you won't feel that way. If she just like chucks you back in, you're like, ah, oh, yes, the gang. They're all here. The thieves. Yeah. The thieves? Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, the Mary Thieves. Mary oh, Thieves. Yeah. That didn't catch on yeah. to me yet. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, they're Honestly, gang of thieves. <laughs> Reading the second time, I feel like for me, the only thing that I noticed more were like just things where, like the thing that I said about like Lucifer, I feel like there, there yeah. should have been more. I feel like even with Anna, like I feel like I wanted more from Oh, I love Anna. And I such an interesting character that I yeah. think that there were like a lot of opportunities. 
Isabella yes. and I feel like are really similar. They would be besties. She's like the embodiment of like mm. what Isabella's driving. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. I thought like her story was so interesting. I think what people Joy also and goes to each other. Maybe? She was like uh, the whole thing of like her coming to the after she does it. Really, like they didn't like to wear the dresses that the girl they're wearing and everything. I think it was like a really beautiful story, especially like seeing again, like just seeing these people that I love like become parents is just insane. Like, it's how are you? Moment. How are you? And then Gabriel was sitting there, like, yeah, I picked out the suit and now it's beautiful. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just like crying. I, I, I think I, just, I did cry like when I read that because I was like, yeah, because you know, some people, even though they're good. They might not be good parents, but I'm happy mm-hmm. that every one of them has their own unique like a parenting thing. But like they make it work, is what I mean. Yeah, you gotta love us. You gotta love us. Oh, oh my god, I feel like okay. So how do you guys feel about like Jem in this book? Because he was like a he was a character. In this book. I um, loved how we taught James to control going from the other world and the present world. Yeah, I, and I feel like he's he always plays that part of um, the savior. <laughs> like he's always like in these very small but like essential ways, and yeah, that's just who he is. And he's such a sweetie. Like I really was always like well and well. <laughs> I just mixed their names up. Will and Jem. <laughs> we're, always, we're always side by side for me, but like. When I read Ghost from the Shadow Market and then I saw more of Will in here, I was like, okay, like he's here and Jem is like right there. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I love. Wow, I actually really do agree with that because I feel like for me, like Jem has always been like right below like Will unintentionally. Yeah. Like I really do love Jem. I love that he's such a nice person, but I feel like I was connected with Will because he, I don't know, like, I don't know why tortured souls just speak to me. Yeah. I was like, I, I feel like Will and Jem are really similar to Damon and Stefan. Oh my god! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like kind of. <laughs> yeah, like I'm rewatching Vampire Diaries now, and for some reason, okay, so I'm like Damon all the way, but for some reason, Stefan is kind of creeping up on me. It'll He's go. Like, I kind of, <laughs> I don't know. He's coming up. I Damon's still there, but Stefan's climbing up the ladder. Uh. Man, well, I feel like when I, I read like the uh, Ghost of the Market and then like at the Dark House, the Dark Lane, the Dark Artists, like seeing his role get even bigger and then like seeing mm-hmm. him with Tessa, like and then just the, his point of view is just so important to me because there were like so many moments where we got finally see his perspective because I feel like in the Infernal Devices, like, we do get his perspective, but it's overshadowed sometimes by Will. Yeah. situation and yeah. like Tessa like trying to figure out her power like picking between the two of them and everything but like the boss of the genre market even though there were like other characters for once it was like fully about him and there were moments where I felt like he took off the mask that he plays like he is like a good person yeah. and he does is like really good at helping other people but like for once he we could see him actually really struggle like mm. actually see him struggle yeah. and like humanize him more for me it's so similar to matthew right because i always have a thing for like very sarcastic and witty characters and they hide behind that to mask their pain and that is yes. like, and it's such a matthew thing yeah. and that is why i love them so much because i see uh-huh. what they're going through and i'm like you're helping everyone else around you and you're like struggling um mm. yeah yes yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think also that is like important to see because I, I knew that he was always helpful, but you know, helping people has a toll, like it comes with a price. And he had to like put his whole life on pause for so many years, like 50 plus years, he put yeah. his life on pause. Yeah. And like, even though it was to like help himself, it also like, it also was for like William Tessa, like he really did give up like so much for that. And yeah, yeah. Like, there were like so many moments, like the moment where like Will's parents had just died, and that scene of them like sitting on the couch together. I remember yeah. like reading the second time I was on the couch, they were not going to talk to 
ended up be quiet and not that good time because I remember like just how they just fall together so perfectly and there's never been ill intent. And yeah. I feel like that's why I think that uh, Matthew and Cordelia are not going to be a thing. And I feel like that, like, I feel like it's going to be explored in Chain of Iron, but it's mm-hmm. not going to like last because mm-hmm. never in my head, like never when we were reading and followed by this, we once hear either Will or Jen be like, ill, like she shouldn't be with Will, like she should be with me. And I feel like yeah. that's what we saw at the end of the book where we see like the jealousy that's coming off of like Matthew. And and I feel like he, again, like I just don't think that he's in love with her. He, she, uh, she sees him because she saw her father, so she understands him. And you know, Matthew is a very beautiful person. And like uh, he puts on a play for everybody but there's also like inner things that are very beautiful about him. There's so many moments where I'm like, stop hating yourself for three seconds because you're actually like really good. Like, you're you're fine. Really yeah, and it's like, and it's like he's not. I don't. I don't think he sees Cordelia for who she is. I feel like there's. That's why like James and Cordelia just make so much sense for me because they really see each other for who they are. Because you know, you know, for James, you can just dismiss Cordelia as her sister's like best friend. And like, yeah. and Cordelia can do the same thing. And you know how like, no offense to like everybody else, but they all like dismiss James as like the leader of the group, like just the smart one, like yeah. all that, like, yeah. Like, he's a little bit twisty, but like, he's not like too much. But she sees past all of that. She, she doesn't see him for his label. And I feel like mm-hmm. she even sees like James, uh, not James, like Matthew a little bit. But I don't think she sees him to the, the degree that Matthew needs. Like, he needs somebody who will be able to, like, call him out on his shit and be like, no, like, this is wrong. And you need yeah. to, like, not go down this path. And I don't think that, no offense to Matthew, I just feel like she's never going to love him the way that he deserves to be loved in the way that, and he can't love her the way that she deserves to be loved because he needs therapy. And he needs, like, he needs to just sit down with himself and, like, let it all go. I don't know. Like, I'm just imagining like him telling Charlotte, like, I can't, I cannot, I can't. That was going to be so heartbreaking. I just literally yeah. can't. Say that. <laughs> oh my God. I God, think like, literally. Why was I just about to say Marcus? Um, oh my God, I've totally <laughs> forgot his name. James' Matthew? best friend. Um, Matthew? Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was going to say, why are you talking about Mark from the Dark Arts? <laughs> Oh, um, I love her. Like a <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? I feel like um Matthew is kind of in love with James. Oh yeah, because he's. Oh, I've seen this theory. I've seen this theory, but I don't know. I, I don't. Then it's gonna be like Julian and Emma again. Like, see, this is why we <laughs> cash these things. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think Cassie's gonna do it. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't no. feel like he is though. I feel like he has that love that they do for their parabatai. And like you mentioned, there is that source of like jealousy there, but I think it stems from what he's going through. Um, yeah. And also that he's seeing James in a different light because of this stupid um, bracelet band. Like, and he's, he's probably like, this doesn't connect for me. Why is he like this? And he has like some anger towards him. But um, did we just change? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I clicked on it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, 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 like this. I'm like, like this. <laughs> sorry. I thought it just made like there I go. <laughs> no, she's going. Like, I don't even know what I was getting to with this, but I just I don't know. I just want my homeboy to be okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I really think him. something is going to happen. Matthew. <laughs> Your name is Marcus. So <laughs> I'm sorry, Marcus. <laughs> I. I'm just so scared, like, I don't know. I, I'm so scared for Matthew because, I don't know, like, he's just so, what he's so close to the edge. edge. Yeah, yeah, he's going like, he's so, he's so, like, close to the edge. And, like, if you go back to the family tree, he's not on there. Like, he doesn't continue on, which yeah. I don't know. Yeah, family tree. I, I don't even know. <laughs> no, and I'm so confused because, like, there, it's not accurate, but, like, which is wrong and what's right? Like, please mm. explain. Ah, but, but doesn't Christopher, it says on it that Christopher marries like Grace or something. Yeah, 
It does say that, and then they have a kid, I think. My Chris is not married. Bracelet Grace. No. Oh my God, we should talk about Grace. I feel like we did not talk about her the whole time. We talked about her like twice. I hate her. (laughs) I don't want her dead though. I I want Tatiana to leave, but not Grace. Yeah, I feel like that. I'm sorry. I know that we said we want to throw her away and stuff like that, but at the same time, she's lost her parents. She's been brought up by this evil, I don't even know what to call her, piece of broccoli. Like, and. (laughs) <laughs> and like, and like, he's roughly like a very charred one. I don't know. And like, yeah. just, I, I don't know. I feel for her in ways. I see that she's acting out of her pain, much like other characters. But we're seeing her in this very bad light because her, her actions are very selfish. Like they're very self-centered, whereas other characters aren't coming from that same place. Um, I feel like she might get a redemption arc just because. How else are they going to yeah. leave? You know what I mean? It's it's a little wishy washy with that. She's and there is, yeah, like go on. <laughs> She's getting like, married to Carol now, so I wonder what's going to happen there. Yeah, and, and you know oh, she's doing it at this place of I I need to you know have money and have that sort of like familiarity, yeah. comfort, and the presence. Yeah. And the like I need to disband from my auntie. Is that her auntie? And like my family history, and stuff. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. From Tatiana, I Tatiana, I feel like I don't know. Like with Tatiana um, away, I feel like maybe like it's gonna give us like another perspective of her that we haven't yeah. seen before. But at the same time, like I just feel like there's just so much like selfishness there that I just don't get because like what yeah. I'm never gonna forgive her for like what she did to Matthew because that whole thing where she like compelled him. Like in a way, yes, yeah. it really, it's so wishy-washy because I can't tell, like I'm, I, people theorize that she's like a siren, like, you know, she can convince like people to do what she wants. <laughs> yeah, people have said things like that, but I don't know what it is. Like, What is it about her? Because no other shadow hunter can do what she does. And then yeah. I feel like the only way for it to make sense is that like Belial um, gave her something yeah. or like, you know, because, you know, Tatiana, like, reached out to so many warlocks and, like, demons, and she's working with them. So any one mm-hmm. of them could have, like, given her something. Yeah. Because I remember from, was it Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, where, or the Bane Chronicles, I think, like, uh, she called Magnus to help her, and Magnus thought that there was a lot of dark magic, like, going around there. So I feel like there's just something, like, going on with her that I feel like maybe if her mother is far away from her, that she mm-hmm. can, like breathe and like maybe get better and you know what's crazy is like there's not like bias like bias point of view like when you hate somebody just to hate somebody because technically nobody in the books really hates her because they don't know like why to hate her right like even cordelia like cordelia is upset like yeah like the reader the narrator like is telling us like these actions so it's not like biased so like mm. the only one that has like hates her is obviously Matthew because he saw what she did, and I yeah. remember like it was it was whole like heartbreaking when he was like you made me. So it's just like it's even more things that she did I wish, to control I wish James. Matthew told James straight after that. I don't even care oh. if it was like a like a kiss. He should have told him like straight away because the goddamn bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the brace would he have like believed him? I don't know. It's just so confusing, like what that bracelet can do. Yeah, and, and I think like, really scary. with like Jesse and and everything that's happening there, like there's some sort of um, there's a stake that both like Grace and oh my God Lucy have, and and it's like this this sort of thing that they have to. I, I don't know if they figure it out together or what it is, but it's something they're both invested in, like Jesse and the whole thing with him, and you know. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. it, that that will be interesting to see it play out. Like, will there be an unlikely friendship that forms, or who knows? I, I want Jesse like, back though. Yeah, I really like Jesse's character. I thought it was so funny how he's a ghost and he was in her mm. bedroom and was feeling really weird. I was like, "You're a whole ghost. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. What are you like? What are you gonna be able to do?" Can he move stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, but can't he, like, touch Lucy, though? Because apparently, you know, because of her power. Yeah. Like, remember when he, like, well, pulled her question. out of the... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, when he pulled her out of the... When she fell yeah, near the Harrendale Manor. 
Yes. Ooh, yeah, the whole thing. So I yeah, feel yeah. like, I don't know. I'm just interested to see, like, his character. And I, I, I really think, though, that, like, he might be manipulated by, like, Tatiana and, like, Belial to, like, essentially might help, mm-hmm. like, get Jane. And the whole thing is, like, so if we, like, move on to, like, the like the next book, the whole premise is, like, there's a serial killer going around killing people. And mm-hmm. Cortana doesn't work anymore. Like, something's wrong with Cortana. Like, every time Does that... Does not work anymore? No. Like, it doesn't... Sad. Like, it every time that... Um, every time... Oh my god, I'm never gonna Cordelia. Every time Cordelia touches Cortana, it burns her. And so like there's a lot of stuff going on. There's like a whole serial killer she like has wrote- to stab the little person. Wasn't yeah. There- with Emma where the, where Cordelia was uh, Cordelia. Where <laughs> the story was burning her. Am I like remembering this? I feel like I feel like something be- similar might have happened. I, I I kind of remember what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember, remember at all. <laughs> I'm probably talking about like a whole different series that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I think, but I think like what happened was that like because he is a prince of hell, the blade could have damaged because of him. Because even oh, though hmm. he got hurt, there's also like fan art, which is like of like Belial sitting on a throne and he has like the wound from where Cortana stabbed him, but on the hmm. floor in two pieces is Cortana. So. I don't know what happens, but oh, like, bringing this fan art from. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think Cassie Claire posted this or something, and she like really? was like, "Yes, she's, so, she's giving. Like, she's giving so so much snippets." Of yeah, the I know. I always get on Instagram like a new snippet. I'm like, "Ooh, this is interesting." And Sarah G. Mass too for a course of reviews. Yes, there's yeah. so many snippets. It's just yeah, I kind of like, like I kind of like it, but I kind of don't like it because I'm kind of like this is a lot of context. You're making my brain hurt. Like what's happening? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, it comes out like four days now. Three. Four yes, days. it comes out. Yeah. Oh my god, it's literally going to be okay. here so soon. Have you guys pre-ordered copies, or are you just going to go pick it up? I pre-ordered. I think did I pre-order? I got a I got a subscription box, so I don't know how that works. Like, are they gonna Ooh. send it? I think it's gonna ship the day that it releases. So I think I'm gonna get it a couple days after. So I'm okay with that, yeah, which potentially. But like, I'm not getting. I barely go on Twitter, but I'm not getting on Twitter because I remember oh, people were like they were spoiling. I don't. I don't know. Like, I never do that. For me, like, I don't think I've ever like spoiled a book ever like unless it's like great expectation or something yeah something like that it's like or like even like the mortal instruments like i don't think it's like a big spoiler because they've been out for so long i think it's like been like 10 years or even more than that yeah. it's like and i yeah. honestly for with like mortal instruments spoilers they don't impact the story as much i feel like you could still read it and be yeah. like still love it yeah Okay. So I remember what? Emma, Emma said that she got spoiled for A Quarter Silver Flames and it was like a day before yeah. it was released. I was yes. flabbergasted. Oh, yeah, because oh. I think some people have advanced... Were there advanced reader copies? I don't think there were. It wasn't. They didn't um, have any... Like, they didn't produce any advanced readers copies. Well, at least from what oh. I knew. Like, yeah, because I, I didn't hear anybody like talk about getting them. I remember, because yeah. mm. with, with this one, with Chain of Iron, I see like a lot of people have them. But yeah. like with with this one with yeah so that that would probably mean that like it got a release early to them because really? of the time zone. I don't know. It's very weird. Like that that was odd. Yeah. Even I mentioned it. I was like, how the heck? Like <laughs> yeah. No, there were some people. I swear. I maybe there was a leak online or something. Like people mm-hmm. were literally like, some people read it in a day, which is like, yeah, well, that's probably, possible. I know. Wait. No, like, no, no, no. If I cannot, I cannot. Like, the last time I did something like that was, like, the first time I read the Harry Potter books, and that was, like, almost, like, six years ago. Yeah, that was, like, like you, was It's, like, like also for people, I don't know, like, I, I guess I respect you for reading it that quickly, but it's, like, how can you, like, like not distract scary. yourself? There's so many distractions. I, like, I have my phone. I have my computer. I yeah. have, like, a little, I'll start, I pick up a book. And like I read for five minutes and then I put it down and I'm like, okay, let's go on Instagram and see what's happening. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, 
I can't do 24 hour readathons. And like now I'm going to start to, but every day I'm like, I'm going to sit here and read. And then like I'm in 10 pages and I'm like, I'm hungry. And then like I leave and come back for like five hours like, oh. Yeah. Yes. No, I swear. Literally, I'll be like, okay, like I'm hungry. I'm going to go grab a snack. Somehow yeah. between that like five hour break, I'm like watching 10 TV shows. I oh, saw everybody's stories. I swear. Like I was on Instagram so much. It's so bad. Like I don't get off. I pretty you, much like, know like the stories. I know. <laughs> I think I follow too many people. I think because like my stories are never ending. It's like people like yeah forever. I scroll down one time. I'm like, why is there so many stories? And then I feel bad because I'm like, wow, like I'm following this person and I'm not watching their stories. And they probably think I hate them, but it's just like there's so many freaking people. <laughs> it's a lot. Like two reviews due on Monday, which one of them is Chain of Iron. So I'm like, I'm reading all this weekend, and then I was like, I'm gonna start Star Wars, and so now I've just I've been <laughs> watching Star Wars. <laughs> and I hate oh, that. I've been seeing WandaVision. This is so off topic. I've seen WandaVision. I started the I watched I think the first two episodes, and me, I'm not like a Marvel fan, so like I haven't watched the movies in order. I'm so yeah. bad. I literally watched Endgame without watching any of the previous ones. How um, I literally did it. No, 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 trust me. Like I, I did it, and I also have like friends who has spoiled most of the movies for me. So I was just sitting there, um, and I was sitting with my friend, and like he just kept telling me everything that happened, and I was just like, so like who is this guy, and why is this important? And I still cried. So I think it doesn't matter because I feel like Iron Man and like the whole characters overall are just so nostalgic. Whether you like watched it like religiously, they're just childhood. Mm. I think. Yeah, for everybody like, and like honestly i just watched it for the attractiveness like i was every second i was like captain america you are <laughs> so fine I'm for fine. what oh <laughs> but yeah but honestly i don't know like i'm so scared to like even be on instagram for too long because sometimes people accidentally spoil a court of oh. silver flame and just like i i haven't even talked about anything like the most i did was like oh i started it that's all i said because i just it's so like I know how much this book means to people because we've waited so long to read it. And I and I try to remind myself, like, how would I feel if somebody ruined it for me? It would be, like, horrible because I've waited so long for this. So it, it's yeah. just, like, disappointing for me. But I don't know. People are, like, I don't know. One I saw, day, something, like, I saw something about, like, a character that I wouldn't think would do anything, but they were saying bad stuff about him. And I'm like, what? Oh, I think I'm, I not, I'm not excited. <laughs> it's horrid and i think people have a different yeah. idea of what's, like what accounts for a spoiler and that's the issue yeah. like i think i like i put up a post of like a post of flames on publication day and all i said was that i can't wait because i hadn't even started there i was like oh i can't wait to see like nesta and cassian like argue because like we know that that's the dynamic right yeah, and it's that's, like, that's why i'm reading <laughs> yeah and i was like can you please put spoilers like before and i was like oh like i didn't realize Ooh. that okay <laughs> so that's the thing right so there's a lot of people getting um i was seeing so many people having arguments like getting angry at one another and it's it's horrible because we all have this different idea of what is a spoiler like for me a spoiler is mm. like quoting directly from the book fan art around it like those sorts of things so i'm like i don't want to know like they could not end up we together fan art. it really like screws everything up for i you. wouldn't think fan art's like a spoiler but it really is really really is and like posting that and stuff so yeah i know i feel like i really feel for people who haven't even read it yet because i'm like there's so much out there i would not go on social media honestly like i just don't yeah. even like even like searching up a court of silver flames on like pinterest will just oh. like bring up fan art as a spoiler no. you can't even like look at it because it's just not a good idea and I, I don't know, like, I'm just so excited to read it because I have, like, waited so long to read from Nesta's point of view because just because she's, like, a villain in some people's eyes because they were reading from Farrah's perspective does not mean that she is. And like I said before, I just see parts of her in me and, like, the tortured soul thing. It just, like, speaks to me because it's, like, I, I don't – I think that's why it takes a long time for me to warm up to, like, Jem. It's because, like, he's so nice that, like – until I read further on, I didn't get that, like, it's a coping mechanism and it's also a way to, like, feel better 
in a way. Like, Jem, I don't know, like, reading Ghost of the Shadow Market, like, I got him so much more. I was like, so this is why you're like this. Like, this is actually a coping mechanism. Like, you actually do this because, like, he, the part where he, after, like, Will's death or something, he didn't talk to Tessa for, like, years. That, like, broke my heart. I was like, like, this is, like, you guys are grieving and you just didn't talk to her for years. And, like, seeing that he was actually, like, grieving on his own as well. It's just so, so heartbreaking. I don't know. Yeah. Baby. Um, okay, I think, what else? I think, okay, so who was your favorite character from this book this time around? What do you guys think? Christopher. <laughs> Christopher? I feel like that's so, like, both of the both of the people that you guys picked, I just, I, I, I would guess for you guys anyway. <laughs> I am an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> it was close between Matthew and Christopher. Like both things up. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love him. But I'm so sorry. <laughs> I get it. He's literally will reincarnate Yes. Yes. <gasps> oh, I think that's so interesting how everybody's kids are not like them. I love that, though. I love I that. I know. Like, <laughs> like Christopher. He's like Henry. Yeah. But he's not Henry's child. And I think, like, yeah. what's so unique is how, even though they have their own kids, they don't see it like that. Like, they truly, these are their kids. Like, this is their children. Like, they are raising them together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. guys, we should also talk about Lucy. I feel like we barely talked about Lucy yeah. at all. The writer of the group. I love that about her, how she has oh, this yeah. Cordelia. It's so cute. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I love Lucy because... She could have been basic and fallen in love with one of her brother's friends, but she didn't. Yeah. And she was like, normal she was voice? Fiery. No. She's like a subtle, fiery character. Yes. I think, like, my favorite part was, like, how many people, like, forget about her because she is the sister. And it is a time, like, where men are prevalent. And, like, even though, like, Obviously, Tessa yeah. and Will don't do it purposefully. It's just, like, the society that they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, seeing her and her own perspective and, like, going on these adventures with uh, like Cordelia and, like, going on these adventures with, like, Jesse, just seeing her grow as a person was just so interesting to me because, uh, you know, she could literally do nothing. She could just sit down and, like, look pretty and get married and be a Herondel, and that's all that matters. But she doesn't yeah. do that. Yeah, she didn't take the easy way. Which would have yeah, she could have. Yeah, and I, I, I feel like Will also yeah, talked about it. Life. Yeah, and I feel like Will also talked about it when about how he's worried about his kids because they grew up in like, technically they grew up in like a golden age, you know, like there's nothing really bad going on until like their teenage years. So he was very like worried about them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I feel like they kind of like proved him wrong and everybody else wrong in the sense that like they really do care and yeah. they're like raised they're all have good heads on their shoulder and like are very like interesting i also think what i really like about this mm. book is it shows how the different ways that people deal with grief like it's not all the same mm -hmm. like yeah. alistair yeah oh, alistair is so that's interesting what, that's to where me. i relate with matthew yeah, yeah alistair is cool I, I think like alistair is just like my favorite like not my favorite but like if anybody deserves redemption, I think it's him. Oh, yeah. And I think that, like, mm. even, like, him and Matthew, like, sitting down and, like, actually talking. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said earlier in the live show when you were, like, you know, they could help him. I think, like, if anybody could help him, it would be Alistair. I really think so. Like, uh, as in the friend mm. group, like, no judgment. Like, he was uh, one of the first people uh, to see it. Because remember when... Uh, uh, Cordelia had run off with like Matthew and James and all of them and they were at the Ruel or something and he was like well which one is it like is it Matthew um is it Matthew like but he like he, was, he, said, he said something like who loves the bottle or like James who loves another woman and I was like wow <laughs> like you really like got it he's like really intuitive too yeah mm. yeah so I think it's interesting to see. And have you guys seen the letters? Apparently there's like these letters that were released. I saw this on Tumblr. Uh, but it was like these letters that he was trying to write to Thomas. And because if you remember the ending, um, after like he found out that he was the one that was spreading like the rumors. 
he was writing this letter and he was trying to be like i get that you're mad at me and i'm so sorry and like i fucked up but like also um that was me in the past and i feel like i have i also deserve happiness even though i fucked up and i feel like it was so like heartbreaking to read the letters because he was trying so hard to be like understanding but also stand his ground which is what like i really like about alistair is that he's regretful and he wants to move on and have these people because i feel like finally towards the end of the book he saw why like these people are so important to cordelia and he saw like why like these people are friends i think him mm -hmm. and matthew like them having that moment in the laboratory like making that uh the antidote like was really helpful because i think he really saw that these people genuinely love each other um and it's very different from his experience at school with yeah. the other kids and he had to grow up so fast and so like I, I kind of like and not to make parallels between like Nesta and Alistair how we can yeah. but like <laughs> it's fun. I think it's so wonderful to see characters like that atone for like whatever they did and all the horrible things but not to like lose the essence of their character like they are still who they are because of their experiences and because mm -hmm. like you said the rest of them lived a very sheltered um, life like they didn't really experience the same wars and, and the the things that their parents went through at such a young age but like yeah. Alistair has this, this issue with his father and him having to take on that role for Cordelia and his mom so mm -hmm. yeah I, I really think he's the most deserving of like a redemption arc because he like he's going through something as well and he was very misunderstood like from the very beginning and when we saw him in like was it Ghost of the Shadow Market when was that when we saw I think it was Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy when we saw like yeah. their group form the friendship group form um, and we saw him, we were like, oh, like, what an asshole. But <laughs> I think yeah. we didn't know him enough. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. And I, like you said, I don't want him to, like, lose, like, his uh, his assholeness. Like, it's his character. Yeah. Like, he, he needs it. Like, whatever, like, that's his character trait. And he's a he's an asshole, but, like, he is a nice husband. I don't know. Like he he does it in a loving way. Like he's really like sarcastic, straight to the point. And I yeah. like people like that. Like even though they hurt your feelings from time to time, you need that honesty because you don't want people to tell you yes all the time. And exactly. I feel like he keeps you humble. <laughs> and he's going to be a character who like loves with his whole heart, as in like if he loves you, he loves yes. you everyone else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited. I feel like seeing his like storyline with like uh, Charles. Oh, that was so heartbreaking. Oh my god, like it oh was so god. sad. And I feel like the second time that I read it, it hurt even more because I was like, like how? Like coming back. Yeah, it was like even though, like you said, we were reading like uh, Ghost of the Shadow. No, it wasn't no Chef. the Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy. Even yeah. though like he was really rude. I don't think anybody deserves the way that like Charles wanted their relationship to be. Like yeah. nobody wants to be somebody's dirty little secret. Oh my god, and that was horrible. Be horrible. Like that was like it, it was so weird, right? Because you seeing seeing him as like this bully of sorts, and then you saw him like reduced to like he was practically begging, and it was so sad because yeah. we're like. Like this is not you. You are strong, and this guy is a douchebag. And yeah, it was very sad. And to see it, like Cordelia watching in on that really like just broke my heart even more. Yeah. Oh like I don't know why. I think, I think like I mean I'm the oldest child too. But like just imagining like seeing your brother who you think is like so strong and is so like God. like I don't oh, know. God, I like, would start crying. Yeah, oh, right. Like honestly, I would track Charles down and break his face. I'd be like, "What are you doing? Do not make my sibling cry." Like, what are you talking? No, like the, when you have siblings, like that type of love is like, I hate them so much, but I love them even more. So it's like, is, yeah. like if anybody can like bully them, it's me. So like the fact that like yeah. Charles is doing all of this stuff, and honestly, I don't even think Grace deserves it. Like being with him in that way, even though they yeah. both agree that like. It's it's just for like politics and influence and all that. It's just like really horrible to me to know. Well, also I think it's like very accurate of the time because a lot of people got married during that time, political alliances and all that. But it's just yeah. like really sad to think that like 
Charles grew up in like the same house as Matthew. Like he grew up with Char- like with Charlotte and mm. Henry, and he's completely different. Like he's really messed up as a yeah. person. You know, like yeah. again, like going back to the fact that like James grew up with loving parents, but he still thinks that love is this way. And you know, he grew like so Charles grew up in the house with Henry and Charlotte. So I feel like it's all like based on uh, other things. It's not just like family that impacts you. Yeah, but I don't know. Factors. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I don't know. It's completely different. Yeah. Mm. I wonder I now in the next book, will we see Charles like? opening up a little bit maybe accepting who he is because I, I would love to I see know. that maybe. i don't know i feel like even if he does i would not want him where near alistair like that's done and done yeah no, i agree you can have someone else but you know <laughs> alistair yeah, needs i will go with name thomas <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think also let's like another question is like what do you guys think is going to happen in the sequel even though like Eden, you've read a little bit, like, I, I will, I don't think, like, you can, you can, I think you can say, but, like, maybe to talk about things that haven't happened so far. Yeah, because I yeah. haven't read that, so I can, I can do a prediction, but you guys go first. <laughs> okay, Sarah, you go ahead first. Sorry, Sarah. What? <laughs> oh, wait, I can go first if you're not ready. <laughs> no, I don't have a clue what's happening in the next one. <laughs> I say okay. So since I made like a theories video, I have like my head more like a- as to like where people are assuming. So okay. I feel like number one thing is what we I brought up before is that Tessa and Magnus either together or separately are gonna be the ones to be like the bracelet, or either like Matthew brings it to Magnus, or. Like, just a moment, just a moment of them, like, sitting down, not thinking about the serial killer, just sitting down, not thinking about anything that's happening, just, like, a real deep breath moment. People might realize, like, something's going on. Another thing is that something's going to happen to Matthew. I don't know what. It's, like, it's just so true. Like, something's going to happen to Matthew for sure. Like, it's just going to happen, and I'm preparing myself. But it's, like, I'm genuinely so scared. I'm like so scared. I feel like there's no he preparation. Needs karma. He needs good karma. Even yeah. though he did technically kill a child, but he, he still needs good karma. He already no, but like he was a child when he did that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what he was doing. He thought he, he had good intentions. Well, kind of. Yeah, but I feel like there's also like fan art of like him without rune, which is making me think that like oh, really? something might happen. Like I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen because there's something. I'm telling you, this fan art. There's a lot of is speculation. That, is that when like, like disgrace as a shadow hunter yeah, and you like, get kicked out? Oh. and like oh. basically are shunned from the society. So I feel like something like that might happen. Like I don't know. Either I he can that. die. No. Which, no. Eden's <laughs> <laughs> dying with him if he dies. That's <laughs> Australia. He can come here. He's not dying. <laughs> Okay, or I think what could happen is like he he becomes a vampire, which I think is that very good. on brand. Like, what isn't it on brand? Like, wouldn't you be like, yes, like you're a vampire, like it's great. I think like either yeah, he's gonna be a vampire, and I feel like it could happen because he talks a lot about like the picture of Dorian Gray, and I feel like I I never like finished it, but like I got spoiled, so I know like the main thing of like what so uh, can i just say it i feel like it's like a thing i'm never gonna read it okay so basically essentially the book focuses a lot on uh like youth and like beauty and like staying young forever and he loves that book so i feel like he could be a vampire which satisfies both needs which ends the love triangle right um and yeah i think that like he's just gonna He's gonna like be a vampire. Um, there was also like one theory that he's gonna become a foray or some sh- stuff like that. Hey, but I don't foray. know. I mean, am I saying it right? A fairy? How do you say it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I literally never know how to say this. <laughs> a foray. I thought that was a new term that I totally just did not get. Am I just illiterate and cannot read? I just don't know. 
I call them fairies. Is it fairies? Are they called fairies? But well, like fairies. Like, they're fake people. people. Yeah, yeah. Fey. they're fake people. Also, yeah, I guess they're fake people. Can but you say I don't really get from that. now on to freak everyone out. You it's should say fairies. it. I think like oh, right? you know, yeah. when I think about fake, like, you spell fey that? people. I don't know. <laughs> there should be an apostrophe at the end, anyways, for the e or something. No, I think the reason why like I say it like that is because when you say fairy, right? Doesn't it sound like little, like little tiny cute things? That's not what the fae people are. They're yeah. like deadly, like beautiful creatures. Like they're not fairies. Yeah. They're when, a I think, when I say foray, it's just like they're foray. Like they're I don't know. Oh my god! But yeah, like that. That's what I think is gonna happen. I also think that Grace is gonna get a redemption arc, probably. I don't know, man. I don't know. I also hope that, like, this book, they find out about the bracelet because it will really kill me if they go with this whole book and oh, they yeah. don't figure it out. That would be Thank so you. triggering. Oh. Oh, Sarah, no. <laughs> Sarah will I, throw the book I will out. break. I will break down. <laughs> oh, my God. No, they, they, it can't go on for that long. It's one damn bracelet. Like, someone oh. needs to on it. He's showering with it. Someone needs to yeah. say, hey, it's form some rust like can can we talk about the yeah <laughs> yeah or it's like imagine it's gonna be like something so stupid like his mom is like hey like take it off before you get in the shower like it's gonna get bad or something and then he puts it somewhere and like somehow somebody in the house thinks it's like garbage and like throws it out fire. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny like they're just like oh like this piece of like Deal. It's just sitting here. Like Bridget just sees it and is like, "Oh, okay," and just throws it out. Yeah, it's so funny. Um, oh, I'd love if that happens. Um, <laughs> my thoughts, my theories, and and these are non spoilerish Like I'm not speaking from what I've read, and like I've read, I swear to God, I think I've only read two chapters. So, like, rest okay. assured. Okay. I, <laughs> you're like me with a quart of silver flames. <laughs> I have to finish this right tonight and write. <laughs> But yeah. Anyway, um, so I think that how many pages um, is it actually? I don't know. It's on my Kindle, and I think it's I think it's around the same size, like five hundred. Oh, okay, okay. Um. Oh my god. And you have to finish it today. Yeah. <laughs> I think exactly. you can do Ooh, it. I'm maybe excited for if you. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited for you. You have to Make- text me and be like, I read it, and be like, was it worth it? I'm going to be like, ask you one question. Was it worth it? And that's all I need to know. I will tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, but I really do think, as much as people might might not like this, I don't think that there's going to be a love triangle, but I think there is going to be an inkling of, um, like, Matthew and Cordelia becoming closer because of what's happening with James, and they're all mm-hmm. drifting him um until the point as to when that is revealed and he goes back to normal um i think that the whole thing with like the grace kissing matthew thing will be revealed and then james and matthew will have a bit of an argument or put, and it could be at a and it could be at a moment where it's like the most important for them to stand together like you know james needs him or something like that and they're like yeah. no we hate each other so that's going to be it um I feel like Jesse's gonna come back, like however For that sure. happens. Done deal. It has to yeah. happen. And oh what else? I feel like we're gonna see more of Jem. I really hope I that want we- to. Yeah, like yeah. more involved. More involved. Um and a bit of Essa as well, because I think it's a lot of will um and yeah. not her. And I wanna see more of yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I think yeah. Yeah, um, and maybe Alistair and Oh my god what's his name alistair and thomas are for sure yeah so like <laughs> they have to be if they don't yeah oh I'll my be- god no they're literally <laughs> ever since that moment in paris where they like saw each other i was like yep that's yes. it there, there needs to be nothing else 100 percent um but yeah i don't know you I'm, know what sure you know what was so funny to me with that scene was that like um Matthew wanted Matthew wanted Thomas to go there, um, and yeah. the fact that like Matthew hates Alistair so much, but he's the reason why like something starts is so funny to me. Yes, and also mm. what I was just thinking is like with the whole marriage thing. Like I know that <gasps> yes, we didn't talk about that at all. They're each other, right? They're going to have to be in each other's lives and in each other's faces like every single day. So I'm so interested to see what happens. The dynamic. Like, 
that is there, they're still going to have to talk. They're going to go through things together. And it's kind of like, I think oh, uh, I just realized something. Yeah, they're, aren't they going to like live on their own? Yeah, I feel like when. Do they? Yeah, I, they're going to fall in love. What is going on? They're going to fall in love. Yeah. No, like it's it's short. Even it's with sh- the goddamn bracelets. Yes. She has the like, true power is love. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. I'm waiting. <laughs> Wait, I feel like we should talk about like the marriage thing. Like, how did you guys feel about that at the end? I like, thought it was marriage. Great. Oh. What? Yeah, you know, Please. you know what's so funny is that like people are like, oh, like that big plot twist at the end. Like reading it the second time, I completely forgot it's a plot twist. Yeah, I was like, like it, oh, it's more like it, is it, it supposed was- to be a plot twist? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I thought, like people act like it's such a big plot twist. Like I was on TikTok the other day, like looking at some like goal, chain of goal like TikToks, and they're like that plot twist. I'm like, is it a plot twist though? Like I knew that like I knew that Cassandra Clare likes to torture her characters. So like, what's the worst way to torture somebody who's in love with somebody and the other one's completely ignorant about yeah, it? You right. put them in a marriage. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but right. I thought it's it was like, like so interesting. Like I think it's so interesting because I'm really excited to see like what she does with that because there's so many ways that this could go. And yeah. I think that like I think now that you talk about the fact that they're not gonna be at their parents' house, I think that potentially that Cordelia then might be the one to find out about the bracelet. Yeah. She's she's definitely going to pick up on something. Mm. Like she's going to be around him all the time and she's going to notice that he's a bit different. Um, like he's he's kind of like lost with the he did a 180. He did a 180 is what yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah. She's gonna know this. Hopefully. I just yeah, there's just like no way that you can live with somebody like that. Like even as roommates, like because that essentially that's what they're gonna be as roommates. But it's like even with that, like, I, you're gonna notice things, right? Yeah. Like you're gonna I feel like there's going to be a lot of things. And like you said, there's, I love like, and when in like fantasy or like romances, like when like proximity, like close proximity has to happen, like they have to work together. They have to like spend this time together. So this year, I think that like, it's going to be longer than a year. I think they're going to like stick it out and like really be a couple, you know? Yeah. I think it's so funny as well, like seeing them mm. at that talking about like in a year we're gonna get a divorce because it, it just feels so surreal right like they're so young yeah. and I know it's very common at that time to get married young like regardless of this situation but it's just like what are you talking about like you guys are babies <laughs> <laughs> I know they're like 17 and they're like okay like I wonder if they're sleeping in the same bed Do you oh. think they're gonna have separate beds or the same bed I, I feel like if Cassie really wants to torture them it has to be the same bed <laughs> Yeah, but like, yeah. Is she, uh, I don't know, like that trope, right? <laughs> yeah, the sharing the bed thing. For yeah. me, it depends. Yeah. Like sometimes well, it's they, really they weird. They definitely have a house, so they can have like several several rooms. Sev- yes, oh, but I feel like since like there's gonna be like servants probably living with them in order to keep the thing, they probably will have to mm. end up like oh, sleeping together. Like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> like we wish, but like they're gonna probably be like sleeping in the same room because they have to keep up these. Because the only people that know are their friend group. Oh, I also think, yeah. like, doesn't Alistair know, I think, that, like, the marriage isn't real? So, like, for me, like, seeing him be, like, a, a big older brother, like, when after, like, him, I think there was, like, a snippet of uh, him, like, uh, I don't know, like, them playing chess and, like, him trying to take her mind off of it. Uh, but I feel like for him, like knowing that uh, James did that for his sister, like solidified for him again, that this is like their friend group, like they love each other, it doesn't matter. And like, they're different from what I've experienced. So Mm -hmm. yeah, but I think like the whole marriage situation is gonna be so interesting. And the thing is like, she can do anything. She can like literally do anything. She has the power. (laughs) I know, she does. And I can't wait to see what she does. And I know she's gonna torture us. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for me this time around, the fact that it's unrequited, like it's it's unrequited, but it's not unrequited. Like there's a twist. Yeah. Because because deep down, I feel like we all know that he loves Cordelia, right? Like yeah. deep down, yeah. we all know. Even Grace knows. Yeah. Right. Like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's like it's a whole Everyone. situation. Everybody Everyone knows. knows. But I think what's even hurtful, like for me, even 
was like the scene at the end where uh, like Cordelia, after like days of like not seeing each other, she goes and visits him finally. And then yeah. right before like they can talk, Grace comes. And I was like, wow, like Cassandra Clare really loves torturing her. Like, yeah. seriously. Yeah. And, and you know, like, I think for me, the reason why like it hurts so much to see that is because Cordelia is already such a strong person that mm -hmm. something like this is so like heartbreaking because she knows that she can control everything else in her life. Like she can pick her clothes, she can like pick her friends, she can like do all this, like her whole life, right? But like this thing about love, you can't like force somebody to love you back. Yeah. yeah. I hate that she has to go through that, but I think yeah. Yeah. I think she's only gonna be stronger though. And I feel like, I'm, I think there's gonna be like a breaking point when she's gonna be like, no, you idiot. Like I really love you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Coming. and i can't wait i love i love scenes like that like in in romances or just like fantasy like when they're like no you complete imbecile like i love you yeah what if he's like he's like ranting about grace it's like oh my god i'm in love with grace and then cordelia comes in gives him big like smack on the lips with her own lips <laughs> oh and my then, god we never talked about the scene in the in the in the library thingy like in the, in the that was an iconic scene that was pretty Wait, actually, what was that? I can't remember. That was in the Ruel, right? And they were hiding oh, yes. and they wanted help. <gasps> they wanted help from Hypatia. I want that. I want that. There's this beautiful print and I want it in my room. Like I want a big poster of that. It's it so beautiful. Like it's so beautiful. And that whole scene, they were doing so much. Like for a Cassandra Clare book, they were doing a lot. Like <laughs> Yeah. Will's book, like in books. the Infernal Devices, it took three books. Okay, so the fact that they were already like being handsy, I was like, "Whoa, what's happening here?" <laughs> Way to like, go! This is another world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, this is like a lot. I can't believe it's coming out in a week. Like, not even a week. It's like three days. Yeah, like mm. it's on well, Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's gonna come out on. March 3rd, I think, yeah, yeah. which is our Tuesday for us. Yeah. Is it March 3rd or March 2nd? I think it's March 2nd. No. It was yeah, going to be Monday 2nd, then. I think. Maybe, like, for me, it's March <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm pretty sure it's March. Let me. Okay. It's, let me just look at the calendar. March yeah, 2nd. It's, it's, it's a Tuesday. March 2nd. Tuesdays. I pre-ordered oh my it. My actual physical copy of it. Now so, I feel like I should have pre-ordered it, but I feel like I'm okay with getting the subscription box as long as nobody spoils me. I will be completely okay. Which if subscription? No, box I um, I think I got Lit Joy Crate. Okay, yeah. Ooh. I've never like done a subscription uh, a subscription box before because usually I'm like worried about like whether I'm actually gonna really like these things. But for mm. me, like I realized that like this is Shadowhunter stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna love it you anyway. Like so uh, you can yeah. they can give me a pencil with like Will's face on it. I'd be like, all right, <laughs> that was great. Thank you for this pencil. This. Take my money. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I haven't got one in ages. Just because I was telling, I think was I telling you guys like the shipping is just absurd to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> It's no, it's like insane. Like even I know it's even worse for you guys because like it's like all, I think like customs as well, like all of this stuff. But like even here, like there's like sometimes like twelve, like thirteen dollar shipping, which is like probably nothing to you. But like here, it's like you guys are literally a couple of away. But it's it's a lot. Yeah. So. But for me, I think I, I wanted to get one anyways because I've never had one before. And I was like, if I'm ever going to get one, like, let me just get one for this. I think there was, like, also, like, a deal or something. And I was this like, you know, box. I was like, yeah. this is going to be the box that I'm going to get. So, I don't know. I, I hope it's nice. I <laughs> hope it's, like, nothing's broken or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. For Wouldn't that be class, though, if you got a mug of, like, a quote from the book? That yeah. Would be ideal. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mugs, like, oh, what do you have a favorite like quote from the book? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. Oh God. Perhaps. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm crazy. So like, I think I highlighted it. Everything that Christopher says is just quote worthy. <laughs> yeah. 
just, no, my favorite scene with him. Christopher was like that scene um, when they were at the Devil's Tavern and they're like upstairs and like something of his like explodes and um, he's yeah. like, oh, well, I guess that like gets rid of the problem or something, right? And then Thomas is like, no, you idiot. <laughs> like you just <laughs> made the whole thing explode. <laughs> I love it. This is so funny. Is, this, is, this a, is there a part with an arrow where he was like shooting yeah. something maybe at <gasps> Yes, James? he shot. He shot. He shot James because they were trying to love get that. him to go into the shadow world, right? And then <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> he shot him. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. I love Christmas. Where is it? I think my favorite quote is like something that Matthew said, which like really stuck out to me. I love um yeah it's like this quote like this quote is so beautiful to me it's on page 316 that's just a book club we all go to page 316 <laughs> <laughs> um he's it's matthew he says we do not get to choose when in our life we feel pain said matthew it comes when it comes and we try to remember even though we cannot imagine a day when it will release its hold on us that all pain fades all misery passes humanity is drawn to light not darkness i remember like reading this and like my heart like breaking for him even more because i was like there's some hope in there like there's some hope for him i don't know i think it's like really true and it's like a good reminder for everybody in general because sometimes you go through things in life and you think like it's never gonna pass and that like this hurt and feelings are gonna be here forever but it's like true that uh, as human beings like we have to move on we adapt we move forward like no matter how heartbreaking it is and like everything that happens in your life like molds you into the person that you are so like sometimes you have to be grateful for the hardships which is i just love anything i love anything cassandra claire says like anything yes she's bomb. Mm. yeah <laughs> <sighs> well i have a quiz we can take and then like we can probably end the live show there's like a quiz which is for okay. like which well there's two quizzes so you guys can pick whichever one there's one that is how well do you know the chain of gold characters or which chain of gold character are you so you guys can pick whichever one i am yeah yeah <laughs> i want to know okay let's do that yeah yeah. I feel okay. like I we should do that ahead. one and then I feel like we should like you know what we should do we should do it like a group answer so we have to agree on it to see like what character we would be all together yes yeah okay. um, <laughs> let's see imagine uh, if we're grace oh. okay just a second okay. I have to oh okay. my god if we're grace I want a refund <laughs> that was <laughs> we should not have to be we should not be grace Okay, we're second. saying that quiz is a scam if we're grace if we're you grace all together there is something seriously wrong <laughs> like, something, something wrong can i be will <laughs> oh no <laughs> the business just <laughs> <laughs> it's literally yeah. she'll pop in anything oh yeah no she's <laughs> oh my god i'd love to be will Yes. I would love to be Will. Oh, but then, like, or... I don't want to. No, I, I want to. <laughs> yeah. It would be weird. Yeah, you're, like, being the character you love the most. <gasps> She's <Yeah>. back. <laughs> Sorry, my computer was like, forget about this plan. You're going to get kicked out of here and all of that. <laughs> Let me just go <laughs> I just was flew like, away. Yeah, it reminds me of the time we were live, Sarah, and you just left. I was like, what the hell am I going to do? I was like, hi, guys, this is my show now. I'm in charge. <laughs> so oh, the internet was like, no, sir, you're not on this live. Kick, kick, get kicked out. <laughs> That's literally what my internet, my, my, my computer was like, good night. You're leaving. You talked enough. <laughs> good night. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Oh. But anything else? Before? I'm trying to open it up, though. So. Just give me a second. Yeah, that's all to open, like to have it going on each of our phones so that we can take it at the same time. Is it helpful? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was thinking that we can just like do it together, like on my computer. We can choose an option, maybe. Okay. Or we could do it whichever way you want. But I feel like maybe it'll be easier if we do it this way. Up to you. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, God. 
I feel like I just looked up what character are you chain of gold and it just came, comes up ASOS get gold chains. <laughs> Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, dang. Look at her. Hello, Cordelia. Is Wait, that Cordelia? Uh, was that uh, Lucy? It's Lucy. Lucy. Okay, oh, but okay. first, I just have to oh. flex and show you guys. I have to flex and show you guys my little thing. Like, look at it. I have questions. Oh, my God. What's this? Okay, just wanted to show that. Oh, okay. Special appreciation. Right. Okay. Okay, let's go. Is this a group one? Yes, we're doing a group one. I think it's more interesting to see who we are together. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so what do you enjoy doing for fun? One. Oh, I feel like we should all just pick reading. Should we just. Which one? Yeah. Reading. Yeah. Okay, we should just do that because it's on brand. What do you like to wear? I probably need some fashion advice. Only the most fashionable clothes for me. I like to wear whatever is comfortable. I like nice clothes, but I have my own style. I like comfortability. Like, mm -hmm. like what nice about clothes, but have my own style. Me too. I think like that. I'm like a mix of you both. Where like, yeah. I want yeah. like I like comfortable clothes, but I also like to dress. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, for the photo, like let's just do it, and then after that, I'm gonna rip the shirt off. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so should we do I like nice clothes but have my own style? I think that's accurate. Yeah. Okay. What do you like to read? Okay, we're just gonna pick our okay, wait. Poetry, yes. I don't think that's for us. Biography, no. Romance, nonfiction, fantasy or adventure. I feel like for the I'm group of us, fantasy. We have yeah, yeah, yeah. like fantasy for 100%. all of us, yes. Okay. Who do you confide in? A trusted advisor? <laughs> no one. I keep my problems to myself. <laughs> my best friend, my siblings. My siblings, for me. I tell like, no one. I keep my problems to myself. <laughs> I'd say that. Uh, I can. I do that too as well, though. So I do it sometimes, but like for me, eventually, like I explode and I just have to share it because I like need somebody to like tell me that I'm not crazy mm. for thinking these things. I so that. I don't know. I feel like my siblings also for me because my sister. I tell her a lot of crazy things, but I don't know. Mm, okay, so I think maybe we should pick no one. I keep my problems to myself yeah. because we start off like that, and then if it's like <laughs> me, you explode, and then you tell your siblings. Yes. Do you enjoy big parties? They're okay, but I never feel comfortable. I prefer to stay home. No, I yes. just want to hang out with my close friends. Yes. Yeah, I I say no. I just want to hang out with my close friends. I just want to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like, let's say, like, you have to, like, go have a party, right? But you would, wouldn't you rather be with your friends? Yeah. Yeah, okay. me too. <laughs> Are you close with your siblings? Yes. I'm an, I'm an only child sometimes. Yeah, it's very close with at least one. Not really. I feel like yes. I'm a yes. Yeah. I'm a yes. I'm a okay. yes. Which weapon would you use oh, in a wait. fight? Oh. I feel like if I oh daggers, no, daggers, daggers. Or spears, sword. I feel like either a dagger. Oh my god, dagger is really cool. I would just be like, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say like, for the aesthetic. <laughs> you could put it in your shoe or something. <laughs> for the aesthetic. Yes, it's like what? yeah. It's like it kind of. I don't know if you guys ever watched Wizards of Waverly Place. I don't know, mm. but like you yes. know how Alex Russo would just pull out her wand from her boot. We could do yes. that with our dagger. Yeah. Oh my god, close. <gasps> if our friend was going somewhere you knew they shouldn't, you'd go with them, get the rest of your group together and ready to help. Warn them to not go. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm like get the group. I would say uh, yeah. like, go. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah, either go with them or get the rest of the group together and be ready. I mean, like if if one of us is gonna die, we might as well all go. <laughs> we <a> fun <laughs> we time, all die. <laughs> I think yeah, I would get the rest of the group because I feel like what I would do is that like let's say like the whole group is busy, but at least tell somebody else that we're going. Yes. So like yes. it's not like super dangerous. I don't know. How much traveling have you done? I haven't I haven't been anywhere, 
but I dream. I think this is for me. <laughs> but I dream of traveling abroad. Is, do we agree I, on that one? Like, I, I think, think like if I was to pick a group one, it would be the first one. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been anywhere, but I dream of traveling abroad. Honestly, like I, I wanted to go to Ireland. I want to go to Australia. So. <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I want to, uh, so should we pick this one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite animal? I feel like we were talking about dogs, so it has to be dogs, right? Dogs. Did you, yeah. Do you see? Definitely not dogs. Oh my god, a hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> I put never trust a duck as like my, um, like on my desk at work as my quote. It's so, like everyone looks oh, at it like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, James Herndale. <laughs> We have James. James. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. We're Will's son. We're Will's son. I feel so proud. I'm That's not like, weird at all. <laughs> like, that wasn't a little offensive. But, like, other than. Yes. <laughs> at least we didn't get Grace. Okay? Like, we yeah. didn't get Grace. I would have, oh my yeah. god, you are smart and a leader among your friends. You may not work, you not you may not get pulled into a team and romp, but you yeah. fall passionately into your work or you or your projects to help other people you love deeply. Wow oh. guys, I think that oh was beautiful. So us <laughs> we've connected now on a different level because we have a person in like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we are James. Wait, honestly. Our, our, like, our whole thing was, like, very similar. Like, we all, like, had pretty much the same answer, too. Mm. <laughs> we're James, guys. Yeah, we're just the same. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It's, like, should we end the live show? I feel so bad for Sarah. Sarah, you're, like, tired. <laughs> Please. It's half one. I'm doing well. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. For the bed. I remember. Oh. Man, Honestly, this was no. so much fun, guys. Yeah, it was great. I love, I, those, really... I love live shows. They're so fun. Me too. I, I know. Sweat... It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> if I put up my hands in sweat patches. I know. The second I get up from here, I'm gonna have to use the bathroom and like stretch my legs for like oh five my hours. My legs are stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sitting on my bed and I hate myself. It's like my legs are dead. <laughs> this was so I much love- fun, guys. Yes. yes. I love this. I love it. Well, oh my god. I'm a chain of iron. <laughs> oh my god. You have to text us in the in the group chat and tell us what, yeah. like, if it was good. Because I me and Sarah can't handle if the bracelet is still a part of the story at the end. It's gonna I'm be not like- going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that, but I will tell yeah. you, like, I will say if the bracelet is there, I, I'm going to kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to talk to Cassie Claire yourself. I'm gonna give her a really extensive DM. <laughs> a really polite one, just like implying it that I hate that the bracelet <laughs> is still on his arm. <laughs> You're like, hi, I love you so much, but like this whole bracelet thing, just not my favorite. Go. You like unclasping a bracelet off your arm and just like <laughs> On the <laughs> That's an unreal idea. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <laughs> oh my god! Literally, I. If there's ever been a moment to go into a book, it's now to like just go to Cordelia and be like, "He loves you. I swear he loves you. Take that damn bracelet off." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, god. oh god! But I'm so excited for like this whole chain of iron thing, and yeah. I feel like. If you guys would be down, I'd be down to do a Chain of Iron live show. But I feel like we should give people like three, four months yeah. <laughs> to like get their shit together, read it, and then I won't feel guilty for like doing a live show and possibly spoiling. So yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. that's what we should do. Um, that would be good. Yeah. If you guys are down, we can do this yeah. again, I feel like. I'm <laughs> down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it. <laughs> Okay, but overall, I feel like this was so much fun, and I also think that if Matthew doesn't get a happy ending, I don't want it. And <laughs> yeah, really same. Same. <laughs> oh no, Eden is gonna like I don't know storm something yeah. like I'm gonna, to, like I'm gonna fly to wherever she is, <laughs> US <laughs> after COVID, and <laughs> I'm gonna talk. <tell laughs> It's gonna be like two years later. Yes. Like, Hello. Yes. He's you. 
I know it's been two years, but I still need to confront you about this. <laughs> I'm gonna be so upset. Don't I don't want to talk about that. That makes me so no. Mad. Only good energy for Matthew because I don't think he can handle another big situation. Like oh, I God. can't handle another big situation for him. No. Oh my um, God. I don't think he'd but, be able to cope. To be fair. No. I mean, how am I gonna cope? Like reading that, I'd be like, how much like, more can you like? Uh. Uh-uh. You can only torture somebody so much, in my opinion. No. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you guys. Thanks for Bye. everybody who watched. We had some yeah. fun time. I wonder if anyone's still watching. Oh, yeah. Really I think really annoying not. if they did. <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be uploaded. Like, it's going to be uploaded, I think. So yeah, yeah. It'll be, people can rewatch it whenever they have time. But thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like got through this whole rambling <laughs> of me talking, <laughs> then we went we off real. topic so much. <laughs> no, literally, it went from a little bit of Chain of Gold to like full talk and then like so many other things and then we got back to it but yeah. it was great also this was like also a part of like a court of silver flame which was so oh, yeah. funny how we talked yeah. about it okay well thanks for watching everybody and you guys should definitely subscribe to both of them i think i have both of your channels in the description box you guys should go <laughs> go go do it and do your things yeah, just subscribe to everybody here. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I don't know how to end these. Ooh. I always get so awkward. <laughs> you should just like quit straight away, like mid sentence gone. Anyway. <laughs> we love you. Please tell us your theories. Like, go DM us or talk to us or something. Like, tell us your theories. Mm. I think it's so interesting. I love like bouncing theories off of everybody because anything yeah. can happen. But yeah, mm. bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope oh, this is an awkward. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for everyone who came. Bye. Bye. Wait. <laughs>